And greetings from Orange Bluff, Carolina for week eight of the college football season as it's homecoming 2019 for the South Carolina State Bulldogs as they play host to the Bears of Morgan State out of Baltimore in a MEAC clash here at Willie Jeffries Field, Oliver C. Dawson Stadium, Tyler Cup. Coach Demetrius Davis here with you to bring you MEAC football as the South Carolina State Bulldogs have a lot riding on this one and it has been a ton of an anticipation for Coach Buddy Pugh, who's looking to get the all-time wins record as the head coach here at South Carolina State with 129. But there are bigger things on the horizon with a MEAC game right in front of them, D. Well, they get a chance to play a MEAC game and, and get a conference win at this time so they can still have a chance to be in the race for the conference championship. For South Carolina State, they come in with a record of 3-2, and 1-1 one and one in the MEAC Morgan State with a record of 1-5, 1-2 in the conference. They're coming off their first win of the season, knocking off Delaware State and South Carolina State coming off a heartbreaking loss to Florida A&M. They were trailing the entire way where the Bulldogs took the lead with about two minutes to go, and Florida A&M was able to break the hearts of Bulldog fans, scoring with less than a minute. Well, Florida a and a very good football team. Uh, they only have one loss in a year that I think came from Miami, if I'm not mistaken. So they uh, had a very good game, and to play them the, the way they did to come to a four-point loss, you know, I, I think they'll come out today and get this record for Coach Pugh. For South Carolina State and Morgan State, this is the 40th all-time meeting between the two schools. South Carolina State leads the series 32-6-1. and one. They have won 11 of the last 12. Another streak that the Bulldogs would like to get tonight. That is holding Morgan State off. The Bears have not won here in Orangeburg since 2002. 2002, and I happened to be here at that time. So that was probably our second year here, and they beat us. I think it was homecoming that night also. So uh, hopefully that don't happen again. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we will have kickoff of today's game between South Carolina State and Morgan State on ESPN3 Homecoming 2019. Back to Orangeburg, South Carolina, Homecoming 2019 for the South Carolina State Bulldogs trying to win another MEAC game, their second on the season, currently 1-1, one 3-2 and one, three and two on the year. Morgan State coming in after winning their first game. One and five, one and two in the MEAC. And we have a early start time, as you may have noticed, just after 1030 due to the weather. As you see the forecast on the screen, 65% chance of rain. It's coming in. And the game time move due to Tropical Storm Nestor. 59 degrees. It's a cool October morning. And we will have rain playing a factor in this game, Demetrius Davis. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, uh, when rain is involved, it, it changes your game plan a lot. And you really don't have a chance to throw the football as much as you like. And it actually comes down to a defensive game plan. If that is the case, it may or may not benefit Morgan State. They're coming off a really good rushing performance. Josh Chase had two rushing touchdowns in the win over Delaware State last week. He came on strong in that win. South Carolina State will kick off to the Bears. SC State in the all maroon with the white helmets, Morgan State with the orange pants, white tops, and we are just about ready to go for South Carolina State and Morgan State MEAC football. Late arriving crowd, as you would imagine, but a ton of RVs and trailers as we see in the Mitchell Field for homecoming. And we're underway. Bresden with the kick. The up back takes it for Morgan State. And he's cut down around the 40-yard line, and that's where the Bears will put it in play. So it will be interesting to see who comes out on quarterback for Morgan State. Both these teams run two different quarterbacks. It will be Deion Gallat Jr. and DeAndre Harris for Morgan State. They both got playing time against Delaware State. As South Carolina State defensively comes out in a four-man front. Morgan State coached by Tyrone Wheatley in his first year. Morgan State's gone through a lot of growing pains in the coaching position. Wheatley is the fifth coach in seven years as the handoff goes off tackle for a short gain. Tyrone Wheatley, a, a Michigan all-time great with the Wolverines, played for the Oakland Raiders, had some coaching stops in college, then in the NFL. And now he's here in his first year with Morgan State, coming off his first win. 
Well, you can see Morgan's trying to push the tempo here a little bit. I feel like they, if they can get off to a fast start, they got a chance to play good here. That is Chase far side of the field for a big first down gain inside Bulldog territory. Upended at the 40. Josh Chase, 300 yards rushing on the year with two scores out of Washington, D.C., the 5'11 senior. So Morgan State with a big gain, they're in business. Out of the shotgun snap, it's going to be a play-action fake throws, and that is incomplete. And that is DeAndre Harris getting the start at quarterback. We just mentioned the situation where they roll out two quarterbacks throughout the game, and Harris getting the start. The senior out of Washington, Georgia. Good-looking player, 6'4", 210 pounds. Yeah, he does look good. He throws a pretty good ball there. I just think the receiver didn't get a chance to make a play there. It might be a, something to do with the ball being a little wet there. Second down and 10 for the Bears on the Bulldog side of the field. Just inside the 45, going to be a delayed handoff out of the option. Another good run up the middle for the Bears. We talked about how having to run the football in these conditions might benefit them, and they're going right down the field on the Bulldogs. Brings up a third and short. Well, you can see they're racing. You know, they got tempo going pretty good here, Tyler, which means they're not giving the defense a chance to get the calls in and not giving them a chance to get set. So it seems like they have a pretty good game plan going here. So ball inside the 40, and it's a third and short. They hand it off to the back, and he is going to get the first down from this vantage point. Looks like he just got it where they drag them down and where the official is spotted. First drive of the game for either team here at South Carolina State. See the replay here. That is Chase getting the ball in between the tackles. First down it is. Tyrell Goodwin in on the stop for the Bulldogs. Tyrell Goodwin, eight tackles for loss on the year. Hand off up the gut again to Chase, and he is cut down for a short gain again. In on the stop was Dwayne Nichols and Davis. I was really impressed with what I saw to Dwayne Nichols out of the safety position, making a lot of plays on the run. Yeah, you know, when you got a, a safety that come down here and, and fit on the run, that's a big help to the defense. Out of the shotgun, second down and long for the Bears. It's going to be a pass play, three-step drop, going to throw over the far Ooh. side of the field, and it's incomplete. Just missed his intended receiver. Yeah, they ran the little wheel route over there and had a receiver. I thought he had him there for a second, but he just overthrew him a little bit there. So third down and nine, intended receiver. Looked like Bob Jonio Jr., Two receivers left, one right, third down and nine. Back to pass, fires over the middle, and that is complete. Got his man on the slant route inside the 20, and that's going to be another first down for Morgan State. They're moving the ball. Yeah, Morgan State's came, come out and, and attacking quick here. They come to uh, Orangeburg to spoil homecoming today. New set of downs, and Morgan State's going no huddle. Morgan State only averages 17 points per game over the course of the season, 23 in MEAC conference play. And this is going to be a throw left side incomplete. Well, a lot of times in games like this here, you, you want to get your throws in while you can. You don't know how much the weather going to affect you, and you, you don't know when the weather's going to come in. So I, I guess Morgan feel like if they're going to throw the ball, they need to go ahead and get their throws in now. Yeah, good point. Very aggressive on this drive. They've had a couple of shots downfield. 12 re minutes remaining in the first quarter. DeAndre Harris, the 6'4", 210-pound senior. And it's going to be a handoff to the back, and he is tackled in the backfield. Nothing doing there. And the first tackle for a loss on this drive goes to the Bulldogs. Looked like Jalen Evans on the stop. Jalen Evans, a redshirt sophomore at a Hartsville, South Carolina. Boy, I saw him a couple times in the high school football field. He was a good one. 
Yeah, Hartsfield had a couple guys come through that can play. It's a big third down here. Yep, third down, and we'll call it 12. Two receivers right, one left. Harris calls for the ball. Three-step drop. Good pocket. Now it collapses. Got to do something with it. Resets, and it's incomplete. Just had to throw it away there. And fourth down and long upcoming. Great job by the defense here of having a mentality of a bend but don't break kind of mentality. They had a, gave a couple first downs up, but whenever it's time to get off the field, they get a chance to get off the field. So coming out to kick will be O'Shea. This will be a 30-plus yard field goal from the left hash. Spot kick, and that is just over and good. Oh, my. So a field goal is good for Morgan State. They strike first blood on the board. We will keep it right here. Nicholas O'Shea, a 5'10 sophomore at a Detroit, Michigan, kicks the field goal. So advantage to the Morgan State Bears. They go down the field and a good drive there, balanced offense. Well, I think on the flight coming down, I think they if they could come up with a way to start the game, I think this would have been one they would have chose to come down and get a couple first downs and be able to uh, get on, the, on board first. You know, we talked about the weather and how it may play a role, Coach, but – what do you think about this early start time? Not a whole lot of college football teams are playing at 10.30 in the morning. Well, you got to remember, 10.30, so you had pregame meal this morning, probably 6.30 this morning because you normally try to eat four hours before. So it brings everything into play, and you, you, you're thinking about what I'm normally doing on 10.30 on a Saturday and it's not playing football. So <laughs> <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how they adjust. They probably had the biscuits for the pregame meal instead of the protein. Exactly. <laughs> instead of the sandwiches. And this is a kick to the up back for South Carolina State, far side. And good special teams coverage for the Bears. They came ready to play. And Bulldogs are going to have it out across the 22-yard line. Well, it's going to be important that South Carolina State come out and, and answer this call, that Morgan um, come out and drove the ball down the field. They need to answer the bell here. So South Carolina State across the offensive front, Malik Mickle, Tyson Gray, Michael Terry, Jalen Page, Alex Taylor, who has won the Offensive Lineman Award of the Week out of the MEAC two separate occasions this year. Right, and he's six foot eight. I mean, he's very tall, very long, very lean. NFL prospect. Yes. Corey Fields will get the start at quarterback. Look at this, Coach. We thought that this might happen, Fields. Brought the Bulldogs back and almost won that game for the Bulldogs against Florida A&M. And the first pass far side is incomplete. Fields threw for two touchdowns in the game over the Florida A&M Rattlers. And Fields is a redshirt freshman out of Hollywood, South Carolina. He's got three touchdowns and three interceptions. And, of course, two of those scores came in the fourth quarter last week. Fields with three receivers. And it's going to be a screen pass to Will Vereen, and he's upended at the 20. Great defensive play by the um, Morgan State Bears there. Come up on this quick screen and, and get the guy on the ground quick. That was made by Marquise Thomas at a Southfield, Michigan. So a third down and 11 facing the Bulldogs. Look at that tackle there. Back body dropped him. Fields calling for the ball. This is a big spot for a redshirt freshman here. First drive of the game, third and long. Give you a chance to see what he's made of here. Tyree Snick, the other starter at quarterback, he's more of a runner. Fields is more of a thrower. And he is going to be sacked. Taken down by the Morgan State Bears. That is number 10, Malachi Washington. Well, if we talked about Morgan having a plan how to start the game, I don't think that's the plan that South Carolina State won on their first offensive drive. See Malachi coming in there from behind. He's one of the seniors on this defense, him and Rico Kennedy, the two stars for this Bear defense, and they come out, force a three and out. Here comes the punt for the Bulldogs. And this is a big boot. Bears going to return. 
and tackled at the 40. And we will step aside. It is three to nothing. Morgan State leads South Carolina State. Bears will have the off- offensive football for the second time today. Back on ESPN three. So, did you get a new car? Kind of. Thanks to Navy Federal, only took five minutes. And vets can join. Oh yeah. How do you kind of buy a new car? Oh, it's used. It's for Mikey. You know he's gonna have girls in that car. Yeah. He's gonna have two of them. Great benefits for veterans. From Navy Federal Credit Union, our members are the mission. And back to Orangeburg, South Carolina after the punt. Morgan State will have the football for the second time today as the rain has been intermittent so far. We expect it to start to come down here any moment. It's on its way. Morgan State with a handoff straight ahead, short gain again, but I think Coach Tyrone Wheatley, being a former running back full, fullback himself, he's fine with two, three yards in a cloud of dust. Yeah, when you get two, three yards in a cloud of dust and you mess around and get one more yard, that's a first down. So <laughs> and a lot of time when people have that mindset of three yards and, and three yards and two yards, you get a first down and the clock's running. So that's in your favor. Four man front. Bring up a linebacker showing blitz. Play action fake. Harris going to throw wide open receiver in the flat. Got him. Looks to be close to a first down far side of the field at the 50. I've I've been impressed with uh, Morgan State's offense so far. They've ran the ball when they needed to. They've thrown the ball and been able to get some first downs here. That's been big. See the replay, a little play action fake. Good pull on the ball. And that was the tight end. The son of the coach, Tyrone Wheatley, Jr., a graduate student out of Buffalo, and tackling the backfield for the Bulldogs. And there's Jalen Evans again. Good tackle for a loss there. One thing you have to do in games like this, you have to win on first down. Whether the offense or defense, whoever wins first down, have a chance to be successful in the drive. Jabril Johnson on the carry out of Baltimore. Had nowhere to go. Second down and 11. Two receivers, two backs. Harris calls for the ball again. Step back. He's going to throw this one deep. Single coverage, and that is incomplete. Receiver had a beat on it, but just overshot his man. And that is Jordan Cofield, sophomore out of Baltimore. Let's take a look at the replay, Coach. What do you see? Well, a little play action pass, and it like they try to hit him on a post pass, try to see if they can get the safety's eyes in the backfield to fake the run and try to run a post behind him. That was Zafir Kelly on the coverage. So it stays third and 11. Ball at midfield at the 50. 8.04 remaining in the first quarter, just getting started. But the Bears have a three-point lead. Getting chased and rushed, and he sacked in the backfield. Oh, had him on his blind side. There's Patrick Godbolt out of Blythewood High School, freshman. Patrick Godbolt out of Blythewood, South Carolina. You actually coached against him a couple times, and he was a monster for the Bengals. Very good player. Kind of looked like the same way he did against us when he played against us. And Godbold, a true freshman out there playing on third down and long situations. Had the opportunity to coach him in the Metro Bowl, the first annual Metro Bowl last year. Patrick was on our team, a great kid. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a timeout is called before the punt. So a timeout for the Morgan State Bears, and we will step away. It's 3 to nothing. Morgan State Bears lead the South Carolina State Bulldogs on homecoming 2019 on ESPN3. We'll return, and the Bulldogs will have the football. From Navy Federal Credit Union, our members are the mission. Morgan State back to punt it away. 3 to nothing. the Bears lead the South Carolina State Bulldogs in Orangeburg, South Carolina for homecoming. And there is the punt as the rain starts to come down here in Orangeburg. Morgan State will let it bounce around the 20. This is crucial here, Demetrius. This is a team in South Carolina State that averages over 30 points a game on offense 
they got to get something going here because this rain could really affect the contest. Yeah, you have to get some first downs. And then, you know, you need a guy to make a play. You need a big play here somewhere to take the – I take I call it taking the cover off. Once you take the cover off, then, you know, you get a chance to make some plays and guys catch balls and then you score and then you can continue to do it. So here is Corey Fields back out on offense. Leading the Bulldogs, the red shirt freshman. Three receivers right, one left. And movement up front. And this is going to happen with a red shirt freshman here, Coach. Yeah, you're going to have some mistakes there, but I think they went on a, a, a hard count there. And I think the receiver, I think Shaq Davis might have moved a little early out there. Who's another red shirt freshman? Yes. <laughs> Both these teams play a lot of young kids. You know, Morgan State's offensive line has three true freshmen on it. Fields back to pass, going to throw a little stop route, and I think that is Shaq Davis on the reception. That's our friend Shaq, the one that I just blamed for the false start. He made up for it. He came <laughs> back and, and got a, a good catch there to give him a second down. Little stop route on the instant replay. Davis, a redshirt freshman out of Somerville, South Carolina. There's something in the water there in Somerville. They grow tall receivers down there. There's a long pass downfield incomplete. Yeah, I thought we might have had a, a offsides there, but I guess the official didn't call it. South Carolina State thought they had a free play there. Wolverine was the deep man as you see the replay. Vereen, one of the sure-handed receivers for the Bulldogs out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. He was a two-way player for the Seahawks, played the linebacker as well. It's a big third down here. We're talking about getting a little momentum, getting some going. It's big here. Third down and five. Fields back to pass. Sits in the pocket. Now he's going to run, tucks it away, and he's tackled up to the 30-yard line, and that's not going to be enough for the first down. Yeah, it came about a yard short there. Uh, pretty good coverage there on, by Morgan. It seemed like they went man coverage there, and, and the receivers had a bad time getting out there, and then he was able to get the ball and stop him short there. So fourth and one, and the Bulldogs will punt yet again. Morgan State defensively. Middle of the pack in the MEAC. They've given up a lot of points so far this year. Right now, they're holding strong on the Bulldogs in a wet day in Orangeburg. Returner takes it far side and knocked out of bounds out across the 30. <clears throat> we'll keep with the action here. On offense for Morgan State, we talked about averaging 23 points per game the last few games in MEAC play. About 200 yards on the ground and 150 through the air. So not very good in the passing game, but they do average over 200 on the ground, and that's going to be a key factor here with the rain. Yeah, anytime you can rush for over 200 yards a game, you have a chance to win some games. Huh? And looking at some of the scores Morgan's had over the, year, they've, over the season, they've had some good games. Hand off far side to Chase, and he's wrapped up in the backfield. Nowhere to go. I think Rod Perry was in on the stop. At a Nightdale, North Carolina. Yep, that was Perry getting through the line and wrapping him up. Also, Tyrell Goodwin out of Columbia. That's another tackle for loss for him. Another tackle for loss. Tyrell normally have a lot of uh, tackles out of AC Floor High School in Columbia. It's going to be a dump pass to the running back, and he is grabbed by the leg around the 30-yard line and not going much further there. So a short gain, they pick up some of the yards they lost on tackle for loss, and it's third down and long. Another big third down here. You know, the football game is, is, is all about third down. You tell your offensive guys you need to stay on the field, and you tell your defensive guys you need to get off the field. A thing to watch here, Coach, is going to be the three true freshmen on the offensive front. They're on that right side. The center, right guard, and right tackle. They're big kids, but not a whole lot of experience. Low snap to Harris. Step back in the pocket. Wide open dump pass there at the 40. 45 coming near side. Hit hard at the 50. And my goodness, 
coming in making the tackle was Jablonski Green. That was a hit. That was a hit. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. That's a wake-up call. Boy, wide open on the far side there, and Green laying the wood at midfield. So a new set of downs. They convert the third down. As the rain's starting to come down a little harder here. A little stop route on the near side of the field. Still on his feet. Going inside the 45-yard line to the 43. Zafir Kelly wrapping up. Yeah, Zafir out of Irmo High School. Played for Coach Reggie Kennedy. Zafir finally brings him down. Zafir Kelly getting a lot of playing time. This Bulldog defense have gone through their share of injuries. And there's a spear from the linebacking position. That's Jablonski Green again. That's Jablonski again. Jablonski is a redshirt freshman out of Lamar, T Timmonsville, South Carolina. So, you know, he's used to hitting hard. And whirlwinds hit down in Timmonsville. Yeah, those are some physical defenses down that part of the state. You're right. Yeah. Third down and five. And this Bulldog team is very physical. They might give up over 25 points a game, but when you play the Bulldogs, you're going to feel it the next morning. Back to pass is Harris going to roll to his right, being chased, flushed out of the pocket. Now he's on the move, and he's going to just get the first down, it looks like, close to the 41-yard line. Yeah, great play on second effort. I thought it might have been a little short there, but he gave a little second effort there. We're able to get the first down. He might have an inexperienced line, but he is a smart Level-headed QB in DeAndre Harris, 800 yards passing, 55% of his passes. You would like that number to be a little high if you're Tyrone Wheatley, the head coach. So variation of the pistol offense here with the running back behind him. It's going to be a play-action fake throws, and that is caught by the tight end far side. I think that's Tyrone Wheatley Jr., and it is. Great play call, great play action on first down. They like Wheatley there in the flat. And he just kept his feet inbounds. Actually, they're going to say incomplete. incomplete. They're going to say his foot was out of bounds. And the official was right in front of it, so good call. Second down and 10. Harris with two receivers. Another play action fake. And he's going to dump it off again to the running back. And he gets it inside the 35 for a nice gain there on the reception. That was number 80, Xavier Gravitt, 6'4", tight end. Yeah, it looks like Morgan found something that they're like. You know, they were able to hit them on a couple play actions and it seemed like the flats right now are very open. So let's see what they do here on third down. Yeah, these little slow out routes, flats, whatever you want to call them, have led to five, six yards a uh, pass. Could be another out route and misses the ball there. A little jump ball playing volleyball with it. And it is dropped. What happens here? Oh, got a hand on it. Got a hand on it. And actually, uh, number three, the receiver actually had a chance to make the play there. And uh, Kelly came in to make sure the ball was incomplete. That was Jalen Barr getting a mid on it out of Lake City, South Carolina. Fourth down and four. Let's see what Morgan State does here. This is that part of the field where you may go for it, and they are. Nope, they're going to punt. Yeah, I think you punt here. In games like this, when the weather's bad, I think it's all about field position and time of possession here. So uh, Morgan's doing a good job of time possession, see if they can pin them deep, make South Carolina State have to go to – the length of the field to score. So playing field position are the Bears, and that will take a Morgan State bounce right around the 15-yard line. We'll step away. The Bears still lead it over South Carolina State. Three to nothing in Orangeburg for homecoming. Back on ESPN3. Say. Back to Orangeburg. 90 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Morgan State Bears looking for their second win of the season. Leading it over South Carolina State, three to nothing. Handoff near side to the Bulldogs, and not much going there. That is LeBron Morris out of Decatur, Georgia. 
This Bulldog team doesn't have a whole lot of rushing yards from the backs. LeBron Morris is the leading rusher with just under 200 yards on the season. Average is just under four yards a carry. They run a lot with their quarterback, Tyrese Nick, but it's a new QB into the game. Corey Fields getting his start as a redshirt freshman. Handoff straight ahead, and there's a nice gainer there right up the middle. Running downhill is LeBron Morris again. Yeah, South Carolina State realized they got to get something going now. You can see them trying to get up to the line of scrimmage a little faster, get the tempo going. Look at the push there by big Alex Taylor. Yeah, big, great block by Alex there. 6'9", 310, senior NFL prospect out of Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Boy, he's a good-looking offensive lineman. Back to pass, and that is incomplete. Corey Fields a little too strong on that pass. You said something during the break, Demetrius Davis, I want to bring up to our viewers and listeners as you see the replay just off his hands. Kind of hard to get into this game with the weather. It's in the morning. The crowd isn't very loud. You know, this is a homecoming crowd. It's supposed to be a little louder than this, but these fans are, <laughs> hate to use the word miserable, but nobody likes sitting in the rain. Well, these are just the true definition of fair weather fans. You know, <laughs> if, if you're here today, you definitely are not a fair weather fan. So it's, they need the, the crowd to get going, to get a little in, enthusiasm going so they can make a couple plays. And pass over the middle, and that'll get the crowd fired up. That's the X-Man, Wolverine, over the middle. Looks to be enough for a first down. Well, that's the way you get a little excitement going. Get a little excitement going, get a little tempo going, and you get a chance to make a first down. You heard the crowd. They got a little into that one, and that's what the Bulldogs need. As I believe that's the first first down for the Bulldogs in this game. It comes with 16 seconds left in the first. Fields with a little delayed handoff to Morris again and finds a hole, gets it out across the 45 to the 46, and Morris averaging about five yards a carry on this drive. Yeah, they ran a little draw play there. Really wasn't there nothing much first, but he was able to get about six yards out of that play. Great run by him. All right, that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. We head to the second with your score. Morgan State 3, South Carolina State nothing. Back in a bit on ESPN. Fits for Veterans from Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. And welcome back to Orangeburg, South Carolina. Oliver C. Dawson Stadium at Willie Jeffries Field. As South Carolina State comes out to start this second quarter down three to nothing. And another handoff to LeBron Morris as he gets it just inside Bear territory at the 49. We want to say hello to our friends watching in Fairfield County in Winsboro. Gene Stevens, the president of the Fairfield County Chamber of Commerce. I have to bring that connection up because a lot of folks are polling for Buddy Pugh in that part of the state because there's a connection there. Buddy Pugh led the Fairfield Central Griffin High School team to a state championship. And, you know, Buddy's got fans all over the state, but in that area in particular where, you know, he kind of got his bones before he went into the college game, had a lot of success there as LeBron Morris with another carry flag coming down. Yeah, the last thing you want to do on this drive here is have a penalty. It looked like they might have got him with a high-low here. Or a hole. Looked like they might have caught a hole in there. We bring up Buddy Pugh and Willie Jeffries because today and every week until they win, South Carolina State is trying to win for their coach, not just in MEAC conference play, but also for Buddy Pugh, trying to be the all-time wins leader in South Carolina State history, passing his mentor, his coach, and his friend, Willie Jeffries. Three receivers left, one right for Corey Fields after the penalty. It's third down and 12. Yeah, that was a big penalty there. It took him from a third and short situation, now they're third and long here. Takes a snap. Three-step drop, going to throw, got a man far side, and it's incomplete. I don't know if Davis got tripped up there or if it was overthrown. Might ch check it on the replay. Let's see here. He had good protection, stepped up in the pocket. I think he just tripped up. Yeah, I think he tripped up there. Looked like guy might have grabbed him on earlier, but it looked like he might have just tripped over his feet there. It's been a fairly clean game. I think we've had two penalties so far in this game, and Morgan State is actually first in the MEAC in penalties, and that's not something you want to be first in. 
Uh, but the Bears have played a clean game. It's three to nothing. Morgan State leads. Give Sacramento State an opportunity to hit a punt the ball here so that they can play a little field position, pin them deep, and see if the defense can come out and get them off the field. That's going to be taken at the 24 return, coming near side, trying to get the edge. And he is eventually going to be tackled. Boy, that was a lot of running for maybe a two-yard return. We will step aside. Morgan State leads it over South Carolina State. Three to nothing on homecoming on ESPN3. When we come back, the Bears will have the football back after this. <laughs> Great benefits for veterans. From Navy Federal Credit Union, our members are the mission. And back to action here in Orangeburg as LeBron Morris takes it far side and gets it inside the 10 for a first and goal for the South Carolina State Bulldogs. We missed some action. Let's take you on the replay. A turnover took place, a fumbled snap. South Carolina State picked it up. Tyrell Goodwin on the recovery, and now the Bulldogs have it in business. Great field position here. First and goal at the nine. Hand off to Morris straight up the middle down inside the five to the three-yard line. Well, we talked earlier about getting something to happen to get a little excitement going. Get a, a turnover, always help. I mean, get a turnover, get a chance to get some points on the board, you get a chance to get some momentum. Rejuvenating this offense. Morris is going to get it again. Why not? Powers his way, but runs right into a wall of Morgan State defenders. Corey Field still your quarterback, the redshirt freshman. So South Carolina State gets that turnover. And they gave us the first quarter stats. The thing that jumped out before this quarter started was the time of possession. Look at that, 10 minutes. Morgan State had the football in the first, and that takes the energy out of the crowd, out of the South Carolina State sideline. Bears did a really good job in that first quarter of ball control. It really does, and it? it's, it's sort of like I like to say when like you play against a team like Newberry. They call it taking the air out of the ball. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you take the air out of the ball, and you take the air out of everybody. All right, so third down and goal. Ball's inside the five. Hand off to Morris again. Powers his way into the end zone. Touchdown, South Carolina State. LeBron Morris with his third touchdown of the season. And the Bulldogs take the lead. Well, if it's a such thing as that's what the doctor ordered, that's what they needed. I think now you'll get to see a little more enthusiasm on, on both sides of the ball going into this game. And the Bulldogs, I think, found something on the ground over the center and right guard. Morris has... Had himself an afternoon here so far in this first half as he's gotten close to 40 yards rushing on just a handful of carries. Let's take a break. South Carolina State leads it over Morgan State 7-3. Bears will try to answer when we come back on ESPN3 live from Orangeburg. Play the Bill Simmons podcast. Sure, playing the latest episode of Bill Simmons podcast. And back to Orangeburg, South Carolina. The Bulldogs scoring off a turnover off the short field. About a 15-yard drive. LeBron Morris caps it off with a three-yard touchdown run. And SC State leads it over Morgan State 7-3. And we're just getting started in the second quarter. Bears will take it around the 12, coming near side. little return here. And up close to the 30-yard line. So Morgan State with the football trailing for the first time in this game now. And you heard the band get a little louder during that commercial break, Demetrius Davis. The fans are starting to chatter a little bit. The sideline is jumping up and down. That's really all they needed. They, that's, they, they just needed that one play to get them started. Let's see how this defense responds, not only after the touchdown, but after they just forced the turnover. Well, I expect the defense to respond. I expect them to fly around, have a little more bounce in their step. So it'll be interesting to see how they get off the field here. Out of the shotgun, two receivers. They're bunched up tight as the defense, and look at that tackle for a loss. Got him in the backfield. You can feel the momentum swing, and this is a defensive team. You get Tyrell Goodwin and those guys, they get in there and get to making those plays in there. This defensive line is the strength of this unit. And look at Dwayne Nichols in there coming from the safety spot, but Tyrell Goodwin's had himself an afternoon, and we're just getting started in the second. It's a really good first quarter. He's just been in about every run play. Here's that half-diamond pistol-looking formation 
for Morgan State. They like to run out of play action fake. Going to throw this one deep downfield. Double covered and incomplete. Dwayne Nichols in on the coverage, as was Zafir Kelly. Intended for Menashe Bailey. Let's see the replay here. They just went for the long ball. Jacoby Durant was in on the coverage as well. He had a good game against Florida A&M last week. He did. Big third down here. Now you can feel momentum changing a little bit here, Tyler. Third down and 11. Three receivers. Harris back to pass. Good protection throws. Got his man around midfield to the 45-yard line. Huge gain there on third down. Big play by him there to be able to stand in the pocket on third and long and to throw a strike there. That is Deontay White, 5'8", graduate student at a Baltimore, Maryland, over the middle. Boy, that was, you talk about threading the needle for DeAndre Harris. What a throw. That's only his fifth catch of the season for Deontay. Back to pass, Harris again. Going to throw this one far side, single coverage, and that looks intercepted in the end zone. Did he hang on to it? Yes, he did. Interception, Bulldogs. Yep, great play there by Kobe Durant there. On, went to the wheel, I think, one too many times there, and he was able to pick that ball off. Kobe Durant, they saw single coverage, and Durant comes down with it into the end zone for a touchback. And you see the game plan here by Morgan State. As this rain starts to come down, they want to get another score on because they know with this rain, it's going to be harder and harder to throw the football. And he might have had a little too much mustard, as they say, on that ball. Well, I don't think he had enough mustard. I think he could have used <laughs> a, a couple more like, um, ounces of mustard so, <laughs> to get that ball up to him. But great play there by uh, Dakobe to get in there and pick that ball off. Yeah, we talked about Dakobe Duran had a solid game against Florida A&M last week. Boy, that was a fun one to watch. I caught the replay on ESPN3 on the ESPN Plus app. And Durant bringing it down. Boy, looking like a wide receiver on that play. Great play there. But what a game that was between the Rattlers and the Bulldogs last week. A game that went back and forth. And really went back and forth in the fourth quarter. Florida A&M dominated that game. SE State had a pick six. They mm -hmm. had two block punts that led to scores. And yeah, B.J. Davis had like a 90-yard uh, pick six mm -hmm. in the first half of that game last week. And the Bulldogs will come out on offense. So back-to-back -back turnovers for this defense of the Bulldogs, and they'll come out with the football around the 20-yard line. Fields, play action fake, pump fakes it. Going long, deep downfield, and that's incomplete. Flags are down. This could be pass interference. Yeah, it'd be pass interference there, which you take that as a defensive back there. They will beat on a double move there, and you would much rather give up 15 yards there than an 80-yard touchdown. So great play by the defender to go ahead and grab him and take that penalty. Marquise Thorns, the redshirt sophomore, on the coverage. He was guarding Will Vereen. As we take a look at the replay here, you have just a little too much contact by the DB. So Bulldogs will have a new set of downs, first and 10. They're bumped up to the 30. A little delay here by the officials. Not sure what we're waiting on. 7-3 your score. South Carolina State leads Morgan State. The Bulldogs looking for their fourth win overall and second win in the MEAC. Yeah, it looked like the official was trying to decide did they want to call pass interference or they wanted to call defensive holding. But okay. they went on and, and called pass interference there. So they move the ball up to the 35. First down for the Bulldogs. Fields takes the high snap. Hand off to LeBron Morris. Slips through the defenders and gets it up to the 40. You can kind of see now South Carolina State trying to lean on the offensive line a little bit, see if they can get a little run going, see get a little push going, and 
once again, you're getting a chance to run a little clock and get three yards in a cloud of dust. Morgan State jumped. Fields thought he had a free play, but they blow it dead. See what the call is here. Going to be an offsides on Morgan State. So this will make it a third and short. 9.58 left in the first half, and the rain is starting to come down a little harder. Actually going to be second and one here. Oh, okay. This is normally the territory that you will take a shot down field here, thinking that you can get the first down on third down. Second and one, Morris is going to take it, bounces it inside, spins around, looks like he just got the first down. And the Bulldogs will move the sticks. Great run by him inside. Tough three-yard run. Chains move. Clock also running. You saw Malik Mickle, one of your former players for Fairfield Central. 6'3", 285 pounds, senior on that left side of the line. He's had a solid year. Yep, Malik's played and started every game this year, so he's been playing pretty good. Out of the shotgun. Three receivers near side. They're going to hand it off and a tackle behind the line. And Morgan State sniffed it out. In on the stop for the Bears was Colby Warrior at a Sandy Creek High School in Georgia. I've been impressed with the way um, Morgan defense flies around a little bit to the ball. For them to be uh, statistically not in the top of a lot of, of the categories, they're playing pretty good today. Three receivers right, one left. Fields takes the snap. Second down and long. He's going to throw it over the middle. Tried to dump it off and could not get his man. Pass was incomplete, intended for Datron James. Third down and long upcoming. You mentioned the schedule, and you mentioned the defense, how they fly around the field. Look at the schedule that Morgan State started out with. Bowling Green, number two, James Madison. Right. They're the real deal. Army. Bethune-Cookman, North Carolina Central, there's some really good teams they had to start out with. Yeah, they played some top-heavy guys there, so that's I, I think that reflects what their schedule's not very good, but they're a good-looking football team. Four receivers. Back to pass is Fields. Thought about tucking it and running. Dumps it off to James at midfield at the 50, and it's going to be well short of the first down, and the Bulldogs will come out to punt. Give credit to the coverage for the Bears. As we'll see the replay, thought that was good protection by the line too. Yeah, good protection, but it looked like they dropped. They went like a drop eight kind of defense on them with that getting into the passing lanes, and he didn't have anywhere to go with the football, so he had to tuck it and get what he could get. You got a shot of Patrick McNeil, the offensive lineman for the Bulldogs. He's playing for an injured Jalen Page. They've had some nicked up linemen this year. And that ball will be downed around the five-yard line. That was a great punt by the Bulldogs special teams. And Morgan State will have it in the shadow of their own end zone here. Great point. And we talked about earlier in games like this with the rain and the inclement weather that it's imperative that you play good special teams and you got to play good defense and you got to take care of the football. So uh, we'll see if South Carolina State can capitalize off that great punt. It's that play on special teams or defense in a game like this that could be the difference because points are going to come at a premium. I mean, you never know. Seven to three, that may be all that the Bulldogs need in weather like this today. You are correct. Handoff straight ahead, and he's tackled quickly by the Bulldogs. In on the stop is Chad Gilchrist at a Strom Thurmond High School. Let's see the replay here. Going to give Chris Simmons the credit, but Gilchrist was in there on the stop as well. They give him a yard and a half. We'll call it second and eight. 743 remaining in the first half. Bulldogs with a 7-3 lead. Harris and the Bears got a long way to go. Being Chase going to throw this one out in complete far side. Third down. Third you notice, down. You notice the Bulldogs getting a little rush here too, Coach. Yep, they're getting in the backfield. So uh, that matter came from that right side. We talked about those true freshman offensive linemen over there. Uh, Might have come, gave up a little pressure there. 
Now, they're good-looking kids. We've, we pointed out the freshmen a lot, but center, Dexter Carr Jr., 6'3", 285. Marvin Atassi, the Samoan from the Hawaiian Islands, 6'1", 310. And Alan Jones Jr., listen to this, 6'6", 360. You don't miss a meal. I don't think he does. <laughs> Back to pass is Harris, evades the rush, rolls to his right, still going, and he's tackled around the 15. And this is going to be just shy of the first down from where we can see it. Well, you can see the rain starting to pick up a little bit, and now it's going to start getting imperative that they take care of the football and catching punts and all the stuff like that is starting to come into play. Harris got flushed out, kept it, and was finally brought down short of the first down. So another punt upcoming. Jaden Brunson in on the tackle there out of Blythewood. Another Blythewood bingo. And back to punt. I don't know if the Bulldogs might have got a piece of that one. Fair caught at midfield, and we will step aside. The Bulldogs will have the football with great field position and the lead. 7-3, South Carolina State leads Morgan State back in a bit on ESPN3. Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. Back in Orangeburg, South Carolina. South Carolina State leads the Morgan State Bears... 7-3, ball at midfield for the Bulldogs. Straight ahead to LeBron Morris. Gets it just inside Bears territory at the 45. Boy, he just lowered his shoulders and went forward. And that's what you got to do in weather like this. I know it's going to be a common theme. We haven't even said the most overused phrase in a game like this, wet ball. That wet, wet ball. ball is going to be all over the place. Well, it's kind of like the golf swing. You know, you always say there's no water on the golf course because when you think about water, your ball tend to go in it. So I guess they're just playing. <laughs> Second and seven. Oh, it's going to be a little draw play to Morris. He's got room. 40, 35, 30 coming down the near sideline, and he's finally tackled out of bounds near the 20. What a run for LeBron Morris set up very nicely by Fields with the pump fake and the draw play. Boy, that was pretty. Great play call there. Let's look at the replay. A little pump fake. Gives it off to Morris coming near side. Look at all that running room. And down inside the 20-yard line. Ball at the 18. First and 10. New set of downs for the Bulldogs. And they're in the red zone. One of the best red zone teams in the MEAC conference. Pump fake. Field's going to tuck it and run. Got some room. 15-10 out of bounds. And this will set up possibly first and goal. Fields learning on the fly here is first start this season for the Bulldogs as a redshirt freshman. I've been impressed with him so far. He's seemed to be, you know, he's composed. He's been able to take the guys up and down the field. So let's see if they can finish this drive here. Second and two, Morris going to get it again. Good hole up the middle, down to the five, but a flag is down, and I think you saw holding. Yeah, I think that's holding. We'll check out the replay here and see if we can see the holding. Ooh, actually, they call defensive hands to the face. Oh. Uh, so defensive lineman must have got in and went to the offensive lineman's face. So what we thought was a hold is actually a defensive uh, illegal use of the hands to the face. And that makes it first and goal, half the distance to the goal. That's a rare penalty. And here come the Bulldogs. Leading 7-3 to three and knocking on the door, looking for insurance. Fields takes a snap, handoff to Morris, straight ahead, pushing his way forward into the end zone. Does he have it? No call yet. Going to be down at the one and a late flag coming in. What would you see there? Uh, probably going to be something unsportsmanlike that late. Anything come in late like that is normally a, a dead ball unsportsmanlike on somebody, which is a huge penalty when you're on the one-yard line. I think we might have had some extracurricular activities down in that dog pile. Let's see if we can – catch anything on this replay we'll see what the official wording is from the zebras unsportsmanlike on south carolina state huge penalty let's catch the replay see if you catch anything here d boy i thought he just got over the pylon down at the one and didn't see anything there 
Didn't even see anything there. It's a 15-yard penalty, and it's dead ball, so you actually use, lose the down there. So that's a huge penalty. Mm. And the yardstick shows second down. And they place this football right around the 16, and we might have a false start here. Look like it might be a false start on Malik Milko here. Bulldogs going backwards. Mm. And this crowd starting to turn. <laughs> they are not liking that. So second down, we'll call it second and goal, but the ball is at the 21. Fields with three receivers. LeBron Morris is running back. Back to pass. Good protection. Throws into the end zone incomplete. Pass is incomplete. Third down and long upcoming. The intended receiver was Shaq Davis. Well, that penalty, I mean, I hate to harp on that penalty, but you think about it, you're on the one-yard line. The possibility of scoring there is probably about 90%. And now you third and goal from the 22. And not only you not have an opportunity to be able to score here, but you put your field goal kick in a bind here where he got to come and hit a 38-yarder. Big penalty there. It was a little flag route for Shaq Davis, and Fields just missed the mark. Three receivers right. Man coming in motion near side. Fields back to pass. And now he's going to keep it a run. 20, 15, and down inside the 15 to the 14. That'll bring up fourth down and a manageable field goal situation here. We check the replay. I tell you what, I've been impressed with uh, Morgan State's defensive backs down the field. We've seen a couple times where we went back to try to throw the ball there and hadn't, didn't have anywhere to throw it, so the quarterback had to scramble. Good tacklers, too. Great tacklers. All right, so left hash. About a 30-yarder here. Spot kick, and that is good. Dylan Bresden gets it through the junior from Florida. And that is going to be another set of points on the board for South Carolina State. They lead it 10 to 3. Great snap, great hole, great kick. Bresden just got it in between the uprights. He's only missed one field goal this year. He's been pretty reliable from that distance. And we'll keep it right here. 323 remaining. And the Bulldogs come away with points. But circle that possession there, Demetrius Davis. They were down at the one and had to settle for a field goal because of a penalty. Well, I think they're fortunate to get three there, you know, but you would much prefer, you're much better off or you prefer, prefer excuse me, that, that you would get a touchdown there. But uh, to get three there, I think they still came away with some points. So I guess you, it's not a Debbie down all the way around. <laughs> Debbie downer, underrated term. And there you see Buddy Pugh, oh Oliver, 128 and 73 in 18 seasons with the South Carolina State Bulldogs trying to win number 129, which would give him the most all-time here at the place he played college football. And now he coaches, and he's trying to break his mentor and coach's record, Willie Jeffries. I tell you, I really enjoyed watching the ESPN3 replay of the halftime show of the South Carolina State and Florida A&M game, they interviewed Willie Jeffries as Morgan State picks it up here on the return, and he's going to be tackled. Flags are down. But Willie Jeffries, you know, you hear so many great stories about him. He's one of the legends in college football, of course, in the MEAC Conference, coached so many years uh, at many different stops. And he stressed it's not just about football. It's about educating and preparing young men for the real world. And you don't hear that often. I mean, we're in this age of, you know, college football coaches are getting paid millions of dollars, and it's all about, you know, the play on the field. But Jeffries was uh, so intent on bringing up the fact that he molded so many young men for the real world. Well, you can tell a lot about a coach by how his former players treat him. And, you know, Coach Jeffries, anytime you talk to any of his former players, everybody says the same thing about him. So he's been consistent. He was tough. Now, you know, Coach Jeffries, I've heard some stories about Coach Jeffries back 
when you know the eighties and nineties when he mm-hmm. was coaching. Now I don't know if Coach Jeffrey could survive in two thousand nineteen <laughs> with some of the stories I've heard. But you know, everybody always said that he was consistent. You know, which is important. You know, mm-hmm. he didn't have any favorites. Everybody was held accountable. And you know, once you leave and you come back and you have a head coach like that, you have to come back and thank him. Just seems like a stand-up, first-class individual, and that's one of the reasons they named the field here at Oliver C. Dawson Stadium after him, Willie Jeffries Field here in Orangeburg. All right, so after the penalty, Morgan State is backed up deep at their own 10. And it's going to be a play action fake. Sack back at the five. Who got back there? Was that Goodwin? Yep, I think that was our friend, number 97, Tyrell Goodman out of A.C. Floor High School. Check the replay here, and Goodwin getting free. Oh, my goodness. He's had himself a heck of an afternoon. He's been a run stopper. He's been rushing the passer. Fantastic day so far. Second down and long ball at the three. Harris is standing in his own end zone. Going to throw. Ball caught at the ten. They tried to strip it out. That's to Kobe Durant. He's already got one turnover on the day. That was a great play by him of being able to secure the tackle and try to get the ball out with this, you know, we said wet ball, you know, anytime you get a chance to try to strip it out, you need to try to get it. Now, will coaches stress that even more in a game like this to when you tackle, throw a hand in there, or is that just how you teach tackling all the time? I think you teach it like that all the time, you know, and and get your kids to work on it and practice every day, then it becomes second nature to them. All right, Harris going to run. Looks like he's got the first down as he's upended near the 25-yard line. And clock is now at the two-minute mark as he moves the sticks. And remember, I always tell you that the most important part of a football game is the five minutes before halftime and the five minutes after halftime. So if Morgan State can get another first down or two here, that would be a big win for them not to give the ball back to South Carolina State. I remember the first time we met some eight or nine years ago, I remember you saying that. That's one of the first things I remember you talking about. And this is going to be a pitching catch for the Bears far side of the field. That's Cofield far side of the field for a short four-yard gain, second down and six upcoming. And the Bears are going no huddle here. Harris with the snap, going to throw over the middle, and that is caught on a little drag route. And I think that ball got tipped in the air. I think it did. It seemed like a South Carolina State defender got his hand on it, but they were able to catch it, get a first down, and get a timeout. Yep, and a timeout is called by Morgan State at the 119 mark. And going back, uh, Tyler, when we was talking about Coach Jeffries, I mean, one thing I wanted to make sure I mentioned, uh, when they interviewed Coach Pugh about him getting the record and, you know, Coach Jeffrey is actually here in attendance today. And he said, you know, it would be great to be able to be the all-time winning coach at South Carolina State University. But South Carolina State University football will always be synonymous with Willie Jeffries. Mm-hmm. You know, it will always be Coach J that uh, is, is synonymous with South Carolina State. So even though Coach, Ch- coach Pugh have a chance to be the all-time winning uh, coach here, it will always be Willie Jeffries when you think about South Carolina State. Well said, and they showed that replay, and Harris's arm actually got hit as the ball came out, and luckily the receiver was just there to get it. That was Jawain Robinson. Three wideouts. Harris with a first down and ten. A rollout. Incomplete. Have to be careful here. You know, you, sometimes you can get a little greedy right before the half also where you're throwing the ball and you, you stop the clock. And now South Carolina State still have two timeouts here. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what Morgan uh, decided um, to do here. There was nobody near the ball there. Second down and ten. Three receivers. Looks like Harris sees something on defense changing up the play. Harris drops back. Rushed, incomplete. Third down. Once again, clock stop. And remember that when South Carolina State get the ball back, they're going to have those two timeouts, and they're still going to have probably over a minute um, when they get the ball back here. Yeah, South Carolina State has two timeouts. They could have the option here of making the stop, calling a timeout, and trying to do something with the football. 
Let's see how it plays out. Four down linemen. Those ends are on the rush. Here they come. Harris being chased, being pressured, and he's sacked back at the 20. Sacked back at the 20. And that was Johnson. Xavier Johnson, the redshirt sophomore, number 99. South Carolina State calls timeout. 53 seconds left. Once again, you have to remember, games like this, every time you can get a snap, every time you get a punt, it's always an opportunity or something can happen. So uh, Coach P want to get a timeout here, make them have to punt the football here. Under a minute, and they call the timeout, so South Carolina State will get the football back. 10-3, to Bulldogs lead it. Xavier Johnson with a big sack back at the 20. And South Carolina State going to be looking for manageable field position as Demontrez Burroughs back to receive. We haven't called his name all day. He's the leading receiver for the Bulldogs. Well, the ball haven't been in the air a lot today, so mm -hmm. Demontrez has been a blocker today. He's been an extra offensive lineman today. They kick it away from Burroughs, and that's going to take a Bears bounce at about the 44. And that's where the Bulldogs will put it in play. So 10-3, to three, and with a wet ball, rain coming down, what's the play call like here with 40 seconds left at your own, we'll call it your own 44. Or excuse me, that's 36. Well, I think I would be conservative here. You get the ball back after half, I think I would just take a knee here, go yeah. in at half with the lead. You don't need to do anything crazy here. But, I mean, if you're a riverboat gambler, I think you do it. throw it deep here. Riverboat buddy, let's see. <laughs> Four receivers, fields, back to pass, looking, throws, and it's incomplete. Intended for Shaq Davis near side. Trying to get Davis out in space so he can do something with it. Yeah, see if you can throw him a little hitch, and you might be able to get a missed tackle there and see if he can go to the house. Mm -hmm. Kind of a safe throw there as well. Four wideouts again. Four down linemen for the Bears. Back to pass is Fields. Going to roll to his right, scrambling. Now he's going to run. Spin move out across the 40 to the 44. And a nice gain on second down, but the clock is ticking. At 23 seconds left, and the coach's booth next to us is clearing out. That might be it for the Bulldogs as a timeout is called. Yeah, Morgan called timed out here. I they're thinking the same thing that South Carolina State was just thinking 30 seconds ago. Call timeout, see if you can get them to punt the ball again and see if you can have something happen with the snap or something and get a quick score. So they actually put time back on the clock, it seems. 30 seconds left. South Carolina State with the football and a third down and five. You see a shot of Morgan State in their huddle. Tyrone Wheatley, the head coach. I got to say this. I thought about this on the way in in my prep. Tyrone Wheatley, of course, played for the Oakland Raiders. I remember in college he was on my fantasy football team. <laughs> How crazy is it that I'm calling a game that someone is coaching where I had him on my fantasy football team? That's pretty wild. Of course, there's no way he cares about that. Pump fake. Field's going to throw. Being flushed out of the pocket. Got to get it out. Throws it incomplete. The clock will stop. At fourth down and 24 seconds left. Yeah, Wheatley was that goal line back for the Raiders. Yeah, he could carry the mail now. He could. He was a tough <laughs> runner when he got down to the goal line. He is a Hall of Famer in the state of Michigan. Yes. Just got inducted recently, actually. Coached in the NFL, coached in college. I'm curious, Coach, when – you're in the NFL, come back down to college. What can you take from the pros and bring to the college game here and specifically in the MEAC conference? Well, I think you take details. The higher you coach, the higher levels you coach, the more detail you are. Now, mm -hmm. it's a lot more work in college than it is in the pros because you got to recruit and do all those things like that. But, you know, I think when you go to the NFL, you get to actually learn the details of the game. 
There's a return by the Bears. Looked like it had some potential, but got tripped up around the 35. So with 14 seconds left, I'm not sure if the Bears go Hail Mary here. But it's possible. It is possible. We thought South Carolina State might have would have ran the ball a little bit and went in, but they took three <laughs> shots, so it might be Morgan's turn to take three shots in 14 seconds. Morgan State trying to defeat South Carolina State here in Orangeburg for the first time since 2002. Their last win over the Bulldogs came in 2014. So it has been a long time. 40th all-time meeting. The series started in 1971. Harris back to pass. Going to fire over the middle and a sliding grab at midfield. They're going to say he caught that ball. Completion to Deontay White. That's his second catch of the day. Let's check this replay. A little sliding grab here. Great catch there. Call that a shoestring catch there. All right, so timeout on the field with eight seconds left. That's the final timeout for Morgan State. And now I think you take a shot here, right? Well, you midfield here, you got eight seconds left. I think you take a shot, see if you can uh, get within the, at least a field goal range and you can run your team on and get a field goal on. I mean, this would be a tough place to hit a field goal, of course. Half the length of the football field. Maybe Tyrone Wheatley's former teammate, Sebastian Janikowski, could hit one. Now Janikowski <laughs> could hit one from the 20 here. <laughs> Oh, he had a leg, didn't he? I can remember when he was in college, and you could hear, like, when with PATs and field goal, you could hear the thump every time he would hit the ball. Mm. Ball just inside the 50. Eight seconds left. Bears back to pass. Going to throw this far side. That is caught at the sideline around the 30 with two seconds left. The Bears might have a chance here. They're going to huddle up. Now, I thought he stepped out of bounds as we look at the replay here. And they're going to send out the field goal unit. So he catches the ball one foot down and then out of bounds. So the clock stops with two seconds. And about how long is this one, Demetrius? What do this, we think here? This is going to be about 47 yards. Yeah. 47 yarder from the left hash for O'Shea. Spot. Kick and it's blocked. Blocked by South Carolina State. And that will send us to halftime. Yeah, that's a great way to go to halftime there with a little momentum with a block kick. Let's check the replay before we head to break. And who got a hand on it? Well, he actually kicked it into somebody's helmet, but Zavir Kelly was back there to rush it. Yeah. And that will do it for the first half. 10 to 3, South Carolina State leads it over Morgan State. You're watching and listening to the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Backwards newest thrill ride. Treadstone, Tuesdays at 10 on USA. And welcome back to Orangeburg, South Carolina. Tyler Cup here with you at Willie Jeffries Field at Oliver C. Dawson Stadium, homecoming 2019, as the South Carolina State Bulldogs lead Morgan State 10 to 3. And this is one of the highlights for college football when you have homecoming and of course MEAC college football the halftime shows are always entertaining and that's what a majority of the fans are on their feet here to see all right let's give you somewhat of a recap of the first half we will have some stats here in just a moment as they're still calculating them up but our scoring recap very simple O'Shea and the Morgan State Bears got the scoring starter with a 39 yard field goal then the Bulldogs would answer, forcing a turnover inside the 20 and a three-yard touchdown run by LeBron Morris. They tacked on a, another field goal to make it 10-3 to later in the second quarter. Bottom line here, Coach Demetrius Davis, is since that turnover, this has been the Bulldogs' game to lose. I mean, they have been fired up since that turnover, and we're going to check out some highlights here. Yeah, we talked earlier that they needed something to kind of get them going, you know, something to kind of uh, get the momentum going, get the crowd excited, get them excited, and you'll get to see some stuff here in a second. So LeBron Morris with the touchdown run and a field goal by Dylan Bresden. And the Bulldogs right now with this 10-3 lead, they're obviously going to be running the football more, but I feel like if they throw another touchdown on the board, 
the SC State defense is going to take care of the rest. I think they will. And if you can go up two touchdowns in weather like this right here, you got to kind of feel like you got a chance to win. So, uh, barring turnovers or something like that happening, you'll have a chance. There's the field goal, the 39-yarder from the left hash. And there was a sack there by Morgan State. At, at one point, the Bulldogs couldn't even move the ball. Well, actually, if you look at the, the uh, first quarter stats, you know, it showed that they didn't have any first downs in the first quarter. But actually, I think they might have had one, mm -hmm. you know. But things were, little, you know, things were a little rough there earlier. There's the touchdown by LeBron Morris that was set up by the turnover. Tyrell Goodwin has had himself a day. As we see a long pass play, I believe this was the interception by Jacoby Durant in the end zone. Yeah, that's the great play that Jacoby made there to give him a little momentum to be able to go and drive the field and get this field goal here. And there's the field goal by Bresden. And again, that was after the Bulldogs had it down at the one-yard line with a personal foul penalty, and Bresden was able to connect on the field goal and came out of that drive with points and a couple of sacks there by the defensive line of the Bulldogs. Goodwin and Johnson getting in on the action, and then there's the block to end the half. Bulldogs clearly have the momentum going into the third quarter. Yeah, we talked about the special teams and stuff like that. All right, back with more on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Bulldogs lead it 10-3. to I thought we had something. From the world of Jason Bourne. Put on your seatbelt. Comes this season's newest thrill ride. Treadstone, Tuesdays at 10 on USA. Back to Orangeburg, South Carolina with your score 10 to 3. South Carolina State leads Morgan State here in the OBG for homecoming. And Coach Demetrius Davis, there were some big-time names on the field today. Yeah, we had Robert Porsche, uh, Donnie Shell, Harry Carson uh, was down with uh, Coach Jeffries. Those guys, uh, they probably played a little football in their days. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a tad bit. A little bit. We'll uh, look at some stats here. As you see the rushing yardage, look at that for South Carolina State. Over 100 yards in the first half. And just 31 passing yards, and South Carolina State actually pretty good in the passing game, but not today. And, of course, uh, both teams over 10 first downs, third down conversions. SC State only one of seven, but the bottom line is turnovers has been the key, and the Bulldogs have taken advantage with a touchdown off that turnover, and that's the difference, 10 to 3. Well, if you take those turnovers out of the game, I think Morgan State pretty much have outplayed South Carolina State so far sure. as far as, you know, throwing the football and making some plays on third down, you know. Uh, but for them to be able to beat 6 of 11 on third down, that's right at about 50%, which is a pretty high percentage for third down. LeBron Morris, your leading rusher, 17 carries for 87 yards on the ground. And Josh Chase, the leading rusher for Morgan State, nine carries, 19 yards. Actually, DeAndre Harris has 24 yards on the ground as well. And defensively, Jacoby Durant leads the way with five tackles. And Dwayne Nichols has two stops. We haven't said our guy B.J. Davis' name a lot today. They've, they've done a good job of either running away from him or blocking him today because normally, you know, he comes in and make a play that changed the difference of a game. Back on ESPN3 after this. In 1979, Jiffy Lube changed everything by providing the first convenient oil change service. Millions of satisfied customers later, we're still who you trust. Jiffy Lube. You can do more in a Jiffy. Back to Orangeburg, South Carolina, 10-3. South Carolina State leads Morgan State at halftime. And, you know, Coach Demetrius Davis, you coached here for many years at South Carolina State, and this was always a highlight at halftime, not just on homecoming, but, uh, man, oh, man, this is some of the best bands in the entire country. Yeah, the Marching 101. You know, everybody comes to South Carolina State to see the Marching 101 and Champagne and the drum majors and things. That That's part of uh, HBCU. That's part of the college football experience here in Orangeburg as you take a look at the Marching 101. Once again, the scoring recap, we didn't give it to you completely. 
until we got the stats. Nicholas O'Shea with a 39-yard field goal with 11.07 left in the first. And then it did not um, – we did not have another score until the first – uh, series in the second quarter when LeBron Morris had a three-yard touchdown run to make it 7-3. to three. Then South Carolina State added a Dylan Bresden 31-yard field goal with 323 left remaining in the half. And that is your scoring recap. Bulldogs lead it by a score of 10-3. to three. What do you hope to see here in this second half if you're a South Carolina State fan and if you're a Morgan State fan? Well, at this point, if you're South Carolina State, you got to come out and you don't want to lose the game. You know, you got to come out and get some first downs, run the clock. You don't have to score again to win. So if you can play good defense and don't turn the ball over, you got a chance. Now, if you're Morgan, you got to come out and you got to make some plays to see if you can get some points on the board, see if you can get a touchdown or two. And you're going to have to play some good defense to keep South Carolina State out of the end zone. So Morgan State. One in five on the year, coming off their first win of the season, knocking off Delaware State. South Carolina State also beat Delaware State earlier this year. Both these teams will be on the road next week, I believe. Um, no, uh, actually, Morgan State will come back home. They will take on Florida A&M next week. That'll be on ESPN3. And then South Carolina State will play Bethune-Cookman in Daytona Beach, Florida. And uh, that's always a tough one for the Bulldogs. It's always tough to play down in, in Daytona for some reason. I, I guess the atmosphere there is big. And, you know, Bethune, for the past couple of years, has some pretty good football teams also. If you look at the MEAC standings, Bethune-Cookman 3-0 and in the MEAC, 5-1 and overall. North Carolina a t not far behind. They're 2-0 and in the MEAC, 4-1 and record. And then, of course, there's South Carolina State sitting third. And, you know, I know South Carolina State was picked to finish middle of the pack here but I also believe this team is a lot better than what they prognosticated and predicted. Yeah, I think they are. I think when they came out and, and got that first win versus Wofford, it got a lot of attention of people around the country. And for them to play uh, FAMU last week, well, I think FAMU is a little better than people probably yeah. giving them credit for also. So they played FAMU pretty tight. So it's going to be interesting to see the race uh, for the rest of this deal because North Carolina a t also is playing pretty good. You mentioned we haven't called the name of B.J. Davis yet. He is second in tackles behind the leading tackler, Cornelius Walker, who we haven't called. Right. And I know they've had some injuries in and out. I know Walker has been in and out of the lineup. Uh, but this defensive line, I think it speaks to how well they're playing with the play of Tyrell Goodwin. Came in with six tackles for loss. He's probably got three more in that first half. Yeah, I guarantee you. But when you play good up front at defensive line, you keep people off of the linebacker so they don't get a chance to get to the linebacker. So, therefore, you don't get to hear the names like uh, B.J. Davis and those guys. Another name we haven't called. South Carolina State has kind of run away and passed away from linebacker Rico Kennedy. We mentioned him in the first quarter uh, simply because that was one of the star players to watch. 6'3", 235. He's an NFL prospect. 56 tackles. He's first in the MEAC. But he hasn't been a factor here today. Well, I mean, up front must be getting a hat on him. You know, <laughs> they've been able to run the football a lot up the middle, so they must have been able to get some offensive linemen in his face. The march in 101, you see. And South Carolina State fans are getting louder for the band. You like that? Yeah, normally the 101 gets a, a, a loud ovation <laughs> after halftime. <laughs> All right, we will head to break as it is 10-3. South Carolina State leads Morgan State. You are watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Back with more after this. To stop it. Treadstone. Stream the premiere episode on demand. Back to Orangeburg, South Carolina, where the Bulldogs of SC State lead the Bears of Morgan State by a score of 10 to 3 start of the third quarter upcoming and I know we kind of went over it there during the halftime break but halftime adjustments if you're the Morgan State Bears well they got to come out and, and attack a little bit more you know they didn't play a, a bad first half I think they threw the ball a lot better than I expected them to throw it probably got to get a little run game going here and just you know take the turnovers out and I think we had a different ball game here and for South Carolina State I think you keep it on the ground with LeBron Morris he's having a Career day, 87 yards on the ground off 17 carries. And he has been the workhorse for the Bulldogs today as you take a look at the South Carolina State special teams. And I want to make a correction. I said that this was Corey Fields' first start this year. He actually started in the lane game, which was week two of the football season. 
Corey Fields actually got the start that day and played very well. And this was his second start today as we have another look at Buddy Pugh with Fields right behind him. What do you think Buddy Pugh's feeling right now with the lead at halftime? I think he's thinking, man, we need to hurry up and get this win so I can get this record thing from over my head. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that thing has been weighing on him all year, you know, being able to have that going on. And once he get it off, I think he'll feel a lot better. You take a look at Corey Fields, the six foot, 188 pound redshirt freshman out of Hollywood, South Carolina, getting his second start of the season. And numbers really aren't impressive for Fields, but what has impressed you and me is his poise back well, there in the pocket and making good decisions, making good reads. And when he's flushed out of the pocket, tucks it and runs. Well, it makes sense. I mean, he's ready for the bright lights. You know, I guess you can't be from Hollywood and be afraid of the lights in the <laughs> state. So he's been able to, to be a, a monitor and adjust from being from Hollywood. Well said. Much different Hollywood there in South Carolina. <laughs> but well said. Well put together there. 10-3, to 3, South Carolina State leads it over Morgan State. And you see Wolverine back to receive the second half kickoff. Corey Fields played for Baptist Hill High School. And here is Wolverine with a seam. And he is tackled up to the 40-yard line for a nice return and solid field position for the Bulldogs. And we talked about it. Coming out of the half, this is a big drive. This is a drive that can, can seal the game for them if they can go down and get some points on the board here. We'll take a look at the replay here as Vereen found a wedge and a seam. Took it right down the near side. Corey Fields only 4 of 12 for 31 yards, but like we talked about, he has made some good reads, solid decisions. He has been on the run, 24 yards rushing, and he's led this offense down the field. He's been efficient, so at this point, that's all you can ask of him. Throw over the middle and complete off the fingertips of Demontrez Burroughs. That's the first target that he's gotten today. Little run pass option there, fake the run there and tried to hit uh, DeMontre is on the slant behind him, which was a good play call, but throwing the ball across the middle and, and weather like this, now that gets a little scary. Two receivers right, one left. Extra blocker on the left side as you get a look at Fields calling out the play. And we might have a change here as they look to the sideline. Very wet ball, wet field, rainy day. Here in the Palmetto State. Oh, a little dump pass to the back, far side. That's LeBron Morris, and he takes it up field to about the 44-yard line. Boy, Fields had to put some air under that pass. Yeah, he threw it over the defender there. Check this replay. He was looking at Morris the whole way and just kind of lofted it in the air for Morris to take it up field. Third down and six. First possession of the third quarter for either team. The Bulldogs have it. Four wideouts. The lead and the ball. Here comes the blitz. It's a screen. And going to just get the first down inside Bear territory. I'm trying to see who caught that pass. That was Will Vereen. Yeah, that was your guy, Will Vereen, there with a great catch there. Nice little move to go and get the first down. He just finds a way to get space. Finds a way to get open. 17 catches on the year. Make that 18. Two receivers left, one right. A new set of downs for the Bulldogs. Play action fake. Going to be Vereen on the screen, and he gets free. 40, 35 down the sideline. 20, 15, 10. Touchdown, Bulldogs. South Carolina State. Well, we talked about it. To come out of the half and to be able to score, get Wolverine in space. Wolverine catches the little hit screen, like they like to call it, and he takes it to the house. Let's check out the replay. Fields, high percentage pass on the screen. Good block by Burroughs, setting the X-Man, Wolverine free, down the sideline into the end zone for the score. Well drawn out play, well executed by the Bulldogs, and SC State takes a two-touchdown lead. Spot kick, and that is good. 17-3, to South Carolina State leads Morgan State. 
and a MEAC conference clash here. Bulldogs looking for their second MEAC victory. We'll keep it right here. And I thought Corey Fields really kept that drive alive on the screen pass where they brought the rush as we take a look at the touchdown again. Burroughs just getting in the way. Right. And Vereen with that speed. He's kind of got deceptive speed. Once he gets going, he's hard to catch. Well, he covered a lot of ground real fast there, so he can run. <laughs> but Fields made that big-time play on the screen where it looked like everybody was coming from the defense, and he could have easily made a bad decision there, flipped it out to the receiver to pick up the first down, and that's what kept that drive alive. That what kept it going, and that was a, a very big play in that drive. So now you have an opportunity to score coming out of the halftime. Couldn't draw it up any better than that. So 17-3, Bulldogs score on their first possession of the third quarter. Let's see what the Bears do with their first touch. Oh, in and out of the hands of the up back. Picks it back up. Now he's coming back on the return. And he's going to be tackled around the 28. So let's see what Morgan State can do with the football. Down two scores. You said something at the halftime break about this Bear team needing to attack more. Now they don't have a choice. Down two scores, rain coming down, this defense coming at you. They need a big play here, right here and now. Well, when it's wet and you need to attack and the defense understand that you need to throw the ball, you know, the, it, the ball really don't bounce your way in a lot of situations like this. So it's going to be an interesting, to see if, interesting to see if South Carolina State can capitalize here. Uphill battle. The Bears were 6 of 11 on third down conversions in that first half. That was a big stat for them. This is going to be a pass downfield. Got a man, and that is incomplete. Looked like a flag route going to the sideline. Dakobe Durant was there to break it up. It looked like he had a step there for a second, and Dakobe was able to close on him there. Harris has got a big arm. Ooh. Almost intercepted there. Yeah, almost had his second pick of the day. That was Brandon Easley on the intended receiver there. Second down and 10. They put up extra blockers on the right side of the line. And that's where they go. Tackled in the backfield. Nothing. Oh, man. May even lost a couple yards. Maybe. I think that was our guy in the backfield again. Tyrell Goodwin. Goodwin is... Working on a possible MEAC Defensive Player of the Week. He's got at least three tackles for loss in this game. Including a sack. Yep, that was a good one. They give him credit for the tackle. Third down, 14. Bulldogs look like they were showing blitz. Now they back off. To Kobe Durant giving that receiver a lot of space. And here comes the blitz again, and they sack him down. And that is Roderick Perry. That's his second tackle for loss on the day. Yeah, I Boy. think that was one of those freshmen we talked about earlier. He just kind of went in and hit him with a little bull rush there and got him a sack. Roderick Perry with his hands up throwing a haymaker. <laughs> As you see him there on the sideline. Perry at a Nightdale, North Carolina, 6'2", senior. And here is the punt for Morgan State. Bulldogs coming near side to Montrez Burroughs. Can't find a whole lot of room, and he's out of bounds at the 45. So let's take a timeout. SC State 17, Morgan State 3. We'll be back after this on the MEAC Digital Network ESPN3. I thought we had something. From the world of Jason Bourne. Put on your seatbelt. Comes this season's newest thrill ride. Treadstone, Tuesdays at 10 on USA. 17-3, Bulldogs lead it, and they've got the football inside Morgan State territory. It's going to be a play-action fake. Fields, good protection, going to throw down field, and that is incomplete. Just overshot his man, Will Vereen, in the end zone. Boy, they almost had their second hookup of the day. Yeah, they tried to hit him on a post route there and looked like Will had a little step there and ball just kind of carried a little bit on him. 
You see Will tapping. Looked like he a little tired, need a little break. Oh, he got grabbed there. That's why the crowd, that's why you heard the moans there. Ooh. A little grab. Yeah. A little contact there. Just overshot his man. Second down and 10. Very early in the third quarter, 17 to 3. Going to hand off far side LeBron Morris. Cuts it inside in between the tackles. And he gets to about the 42. Third down upcoming. LeBron Morris nearing towards a 100-yard day for the Bulldogs. He's got over 90 yards rushing. Third down and seven. In bear territory, four receivers. Fields back to pass, and he's going to flip it out, a little shovel pass to Morris. What do they call here, incomplete? Yeah, incomplete pass. He tried to flip it out to him, steal a forward pass, so ball hit the ground, so it's still just an incomplete pass. Yeah, just couldn't hang on to it. Whenever I see the shovel pass, Demetrius, I think of Brett Favre. <laughs> it seemed like he's the one that kind of made that famous for right. the Packers. Right. Did that a lot, whether it was called or not. <laughs> yeah, I think Brett, a lot of those shovels was Brett called. <laughs> he called it on his own. Yep. A lot of improvisation, improv for Favre. Low snap, punt is away. And that's going to be out of bounds near the 15. We will step aside once again. South Carolina State leads it over Morgan State, 17-3. Second possession for the Bears of the third quarter. We'll be back on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Bears with the ball. You can do more in a jiffy. Back now on the MEAC Digital Network, 17-3. South Carolina State leads Morgan State with just under 11 to play in the third quarter. And here's a pitch near side and can't find any room. And that was Rod Perry again coming in on the stop. I tell you, these defensive linemen for the Bulldogs are so quick, so athletic. Yeah, we've said Rod Perry and we've said Tyrell Goodwin pretty much every snap of the game seems like here. Mm -hmm. Gain of one. Harris back to pass, throws, and I'm not sure if he hung on. Did he? Yes, he did. They're going to call that a catch. That was uh, Xavier Gravett for the Bears. Now this is another one of those big third downs that we talk about, Tyler. Yeah, and the Bears converted 6 of 11 in the first half. They could not convert on their first possession in this quarter. It's about a third down and seven. Passing down for the Bears. Ball inside the 20, being chased by Goodwin again and sacks him again. Tyrell Goodwin. Mama, there goes that man again. There Goodness. he goes. I think he's inspired by He saw Harry Carson was here. <laughs> I think he wanted to do some reenactment of some of the plays that Harry made when Harry was here. You see Tyrell Goodwin on the chase. Grabs that jersey, brings it to him, and bear hugs him down to the ground. Tyro Goodwin out of Columbia. A little running pooch kick there around the, we'll call it the 38-yard line, so good field position. And the rain has picked up yet again. It's come in spurts. And it has gotten a little heavier here at the nine-minute mark in the third quarter, and the Bulldogs will come out with it. And I can hear the producers in the truck, Demetrius. I'm going to use the comment they just made. Not only is it raining, a little chilly out there. It, I mean, this is football weather. Yeah, it's a little chilly. Got a little wind going. Mm -hmm. So kudos to these faithful fans of South Carolina State that's here weathering this weather with this team for homecoming. Out of the shotgun, three receivers, two coming to the near side. And it's going to be a handoff. That is Datron James inside the 20 for a huge burst and a gain of about 20 yards. <clears throat> I 
Well, I think we're getting to the point of the game now where it's do or die. You know, South Carolina State is driving the football. They feel like they can run the ball now, and Morgan State's going to have to come up with a stop. Check that Omar Cummings on the carry. First time we've called Omar Cummings' name. Redshirt sophomore out of Beaufort, South Carolina. Two receivers right. Cummings is now your running back in the game. He's given LeBron Morris a rest. Corey Field's still your quarterback. Three wide outs. Second down and nine. Ball in the red zone for the Bulldogs. And here is Cummings again, and he goes off tackle around the 15. Been a physical game. A lot of hard tackles. A lot of hard tackles on both sides of the ball. Like I said earlier, I've been impressed with Morgan on defense. You know, they've, other than like the turnovers we talked about earlier, they really have done a, a great job containing South Carolina State offense today. So third down, we'll call it six. Ball around the 15. Fields, back to pass, flips it, and that was somehow caught, somehow thrown, and caught by, I think that's Traquan DeBose. Yeah. And he gets it about the 14. So a short gain, fourth down and five, and Dylan Bresden will come out to kick. That was a dangerous throw by Fields. With a wet ball, just kind of flipped it forward. And luckily, there was a man in position. 30-yard field goal upcoming. Middle of the field, drops the football, and that's going to be a turnover on down. Bears will have it. First time in a while, the wet football has been a factor. Yeah, that's the first time. I think and we just mentioned the rain was coming down a little more now, but that stuff right there becomes tough when it's wet. You know, wet snap, snapper got to get it down. That becomes tough. That's why special teams are important in this kind of situation. So the SC State defense will come back out on the field. They can't get a clean hold of the ball. And the Bears could have new life here, but they have not crossed the 50 yet in this quarter. They just barely crossed the 50 in the second quarter on that two-minute drill offense. They had a couple of big passing plays, got it down to the 30, but had the field goal blocked. 6.58 left. If you're Coach Tyrone Wheatley, first year with the Bears, what are you telling your team right now? What, your, what are you telling the offense? Well, we we got to go score here. I mean, we need to at least, if, if we're not going to score, we need to get a couple first downs so we can try to see if we can turn the field over here. But at this point, six minutes left to go in the third quarter. It's not really time to panic yet, mm -hmm. but you need to be on your way towards that way. You know, so you need to go ahead and, and have a little sense of urgency to realize that you got to put some points on the board here. And one thing we haven't seen them do – since their first drive of the game were those little dump-off passes, those little out patterns. They haven't really done that, and uh, they had a lot of success on that first drive. Well, I think South Carolina State kind of jumped a little more cover two on them so they could put those cornerbacks in the flat. So they kind of took that away from them then and made them have to push the ball vertically downfield. So uh, we'll see what happens, see if they can come back out and find something. Now, he's made some good throws over the middle there uh, in the first half, so let's see if they can find something. And I know if you're a defensive coach – you got to love the way your defensive line is playing for South Carolina State. I mean, they've given the linebackers and safeties kind of a day off, have they not? Well, <laughs> football games are won in the trenches. When you're good up front on either side of the ball, you got a chance to win. So this game today, the game ball, if South Carolina State can hold this thing off, this game ball needs to go to this defensive line. And I feel like as a defensive line group, you kind of get in the heads of the offense when you're getting so much penetration and pressure back there. So you look at the South Carolina State sideline, and here are the Bears on the first play of the drive. Little play action fake, far side, wide open receiver at the 40, 45, cuts it inside, still on his feet, and big time gain there for the Bears inside the 40, and that is Deontay White, who's had a pretty good game today. Handful of catches, only came in with four receptions, and I think that's his fourth today. Coach Wheatley must have heard us. We were talking about getting some ball down the field, and he was able to get one down on the first down. New set of downs and new life for this Bear offense. Back to pass is Harris, and that's White again. And he stopped down at the 30-yard line, close to another Morgan State first down. 
the Bears out of Baltimore, Maryland. And that's actually a new quarterback. Dion Galat Jr., 6'3", 225. He is a redshirt sophomore as he hands it off to the back, close to a first down. He got a majority of the playing time in the win over Delaware State last week. Doesn't have a lot of numbers, 18 to 37, completing just 48% of his passes, a buck 57. One touchdown, three interceptions. So they're getting the redshirt sophomore some playing time here. And a new spark for this Bear offense. First and 10, ball around the 25. Two receivers left, one right. Back to pass, swing pass, and it's, I think somebody got a hand on that. And yeah. that defensive line and that pressure, that was Rod Perry. Yeah, got a hand on it. Yeah, that was Rod Perry that time. I think him and Tyrell, they, they say, okay, man, it's your turn. It's like they're playing tag out there on the football <laughs> field today. Patrick Godbolt got a hand on it. Both these teams playing a good many freshmen today. Two receivers left, one right. Galat, second and ten. Back to pass. Good pocket, throws, catches inside the 20. Still on his feet, dragging tacklers to the 15. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Morgan's doing a good job of what we call racks. You know, we call run after catch. You know, one thing you want to have when you're on defense is you want to be able to get jokers on the ground when they catch the ball. But he was able to get about five or six extra yards there after the catch. So a short carry there. On that reception, by the way, was Wes Woolfolk. Morgan State throwing a lot of receivers out in the action today. I think I've called five different receivers. Out of the shotgun, ball at the 15. Claps his hands, he's ready. Going to pass. Far side of the field, and he's tackled around the 10. That was... Wes Woolfolk again. So third down for this SC State defense on their heels. Trying to keep Morgan State out of the end zone. Third down and about five. Back to pass. And he's going to run. Flags are down. Looks like he got the first down, and he does. Down to the four, the three-yard line, but two flags came in as he started to make the run. This could be in the area of holding. Yeah, that's normally a hold call there when they come from the white hat, and I think the umpire is standing right there also. So let's see what happens. But I think this might be a hold. Yeah, I think the hold was right in front of the official. And on our replay, you saw it. I think that was the center, Dexter Carr Jr., and this is going to knock the Bears back. Very efficient drive here for the Bears so far until that penalty. So flag down, and this will knock the Bears back. Actually, they call holding which the Bulldogs declined, and then they had a chop block, was that second flag that you saw come in, which is a 15-yard uh, from the spot foul. So South Carolina State took the 15-yard penalty instead of the 10-yard penalty. It's a third, and we'll call it 18. They call it 19 on the scoreboard. We'll go with that. 3.58 left in the third quarter. Bears are on the move, down by two scores. Morgan State with the football, and still on his feet. Tackled down at the 30. And there is Tyrell Goodwin and Rod Perry again. Oh, my goodness. The natural disasters. The tag team in the middle. The tag team in the middle. They say we're going to have a meeting at the quarterback. Oh, I mean, it's been Goodwin and Perry all day. Goodwin gets the credit there, and it's fourth down. They'll try to kick a field goal again. Yeah, this is going to be another 47-yarder that South Carolina State was able to block their first attempt from 46, 47 yards, so they're going to try it again. About the same distance, too. Oh, 
mishandles the football, turnover on down. South Carolina State will get it back. So back-to-back -back field goal attempts for both these teams. Can't hang on to it, and SC State will get the football back. Let's take a break. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. SC State leads it over Morgan State 17-3. Jiffy Lube. You can do more in a jiffy. Back to Orangeburg, South Carolina. Late third quarter, three minutes to play, 17-3. SC State, the Bulldogs lead it over Morgan State after a mishandled snap on the field goal as they hand it off to the back. Short gain there. Let's take a look at the replay of that mishandled snap on the field goal. What do you see here, Davis? Yeah, just yeah, a wet ball. Just a wet ball. I think it's just getting to the point of the game where the ball's getting wet. And we've seen two, uh, both teams have a, a, a muff snap like they like to call it. So turnover downs from both teams from a mishandled snap. And it was set up by, I'm giving them a nickname. Make sure you tell Buddy Pugh, the natural disasters, typhoon and earthquake. <laughs> Tyrell Goodwin <laughs> and Rod Perry. Remember the old tag team from the? WWF days? Oh, yeah. Early 90s? Those were two bad men right there. Well, the name fits them. And we got whistles and flags and what's going on here? It's going to be a false start on the offense here. False start for SC State. He hasn't done a whole lot, but he's done just enough, showed a lot of poise, led the offense down the field. Corey Fields, the redshirt freshman growing up in front of our eyes here in this game. When you put a freshman quarterback in the game, you always tell that freshman quarterback, you don't have to win this game. Just don't go out here and lose this game for me. So <laughs> he's doing a good job of managing the ball game. I think you've said that a time or two in your high school coaching days. Yeah, I just said it last week. <laughs> <laughs> Three receivers. Corey Fields snaps his hands, and another dead ball. Yeah, I think we was able to get a timeout. South Carolina State was able to get a timeout there. Yep, timeout on the field. That is the first used timeout for either team. You can tell by the darker shade of the maroon burgundy, whatever you want to call that color for SC State. Because it's a little dark, you can tell the rain out there. They are soaking wet. A little chilly out there. Well, we're going to say Burgundy now. We don't want to upset our South Carolina State alumni and faithful. <laughs> it's Burgundy. Set me straight now. <laughs> Just like you don't call the Gamecock Garnet red. You don't call it red. It's Garnet. It's Garnet. Seventeen to three Bulldogs out of the timeout. And actually, the South Carolina State colors are actually Garnet and blue also. So I stand corrected myself. They call that Garnet? Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Three receivers. Takes a snap. Handoff straight ahead and not much going there. Maybe got back to the original line of scrimmage where they had the penalty yardage as Morgan State will have mass substitutions on defense coming in. We'll check the replay here. High snap. Gives it off to, I think that's Omar Cummings who has gotten a handful of carries in this third quarter. Four receivers, third down and ten. Three down linemen, passing formation, and here comes the blitz on the right side. It's a screen pass, and Morris can't go anywhere with it and give credit to number four on the stop. That is Simeon Gatling. First time we've called his name, he's one of the Leading tacklers for this Morgan State team. Yeah, great play by him. You know, they were one block away. You know, people always say it's one block away, but they actually were one block away there. He did a great job of getting to the play before the tackle was able to get to him. Simeon, sophomore out of Greensboro, North Carolina. And it is fair caught at the 25. We'll keep it right here and... One of the interesting notes I saw in the media guide, not really interesting, but it kind of jumped out to me. A lot of times you'll see if there's 
players from one team they have from the home state of the other team. Like, does Morgan State have any South Carolina players? Does SC State have any players from Maryland? And they don't. They don't. No. SC State composed of mainly kids from the Palmetto State. And same for Morgan State. Primarily composed of kids from Maryland. They've got some transfers, however, from North Carolina and Florida. Three receivers left, and it's going to be a delayed hand. No, option keep for the quarterback, nowhere to go. And he's ripped down viciously by Xavier Johnson. Yeah, they ran a little zone read there. Quarterback pulled it. South Carolina State did a great job of running to the football. See the replay. I think that was Johnson on the tackle. Yeah. Ripped him by the jersey, brought him down. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. We head to the fourth with your score. South Carolina State 17, Morgan State 3, homecoming in Orangeburg. Back on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3 after this. We're still who you trust. Jiffy Loop. You can do more in a jiffy. Back on the MEAC Digital Network, ESPN3, South Carolina State leads it over Morgan State, 17-3. Tyler Cup, Demetrius Davis on the broadcast. As Morgan State will have the football, almost sacked, gets it out and incomplete on a second down and 11. Boy, that rush just keeps on coming. We can guess who one or two people was in the backfield that time. I think it was <laughs> uh, Perry at this time. Yep, Rod Perry. I know Halloween's about two weeks away, but that is scary when big Rod Perry, that big frame, 6'2", 3'10", coming at you, that type of speed and athleticism. Ooh. Not quite like Michael Myers or Jason, but you get the picture. Back to pass. Trying to evade the rush. Can't do it. Sacked again. And that is Xavier Johnson getting it on the action. That's his second sack of the day. Well, I guess the two, uh, Tyrell and, and Perry said, come on, get you some of this here too, man. Here. <laughs> come on and get you a snap. Get you a sack. Oh, man. Johnson, Goodwin, Perry have been all over the quarterback today. I'll see if we can get the third quarter stats, but I believe that's five quarterback sacks. And that is off the side of the foot. For Morgan State, it is going to take a bare bounce. And that's going to bounce right around the 30. So that's where the South Carolina State Bulldogs will put it in play. They lead it over Morgan State 17-3. Bulldogs will have the football and a two-touchdown lead when we come back. We will stay and keep it right here. That's all right. We'll keep it right here. All right, four sacks unofficially here. They credited Cornelius Walker with one. Yeah, actually, that's not right. So it should be five sacks because Johnson right. just got one. Right. Tyrell Goodwin with three sacks on the day, Demetrius. Three sacks and four tackle for a loss. I don't know who decides the MEAC player of the week, but I think you can shine up that award and send it down to Orangeburg for Tyrell Goodwin. Handoff near side. Slips through. And gets a short gain there. Morgan State trying to rip the ball out. That's Omar Cummings, the ball carrier. Anything that jump out to you on the third quarter stats? Looking at the first downs. I mean, you look at South Carolina State now have 17 first downs to more to Morgan State's three. You know, that's a big difference there. Time of possession, we talked about a little earlier where Morgan was winning the time of possession game. Now, South Carolina State's been able to go and chew a little bit of clock here. So, that's the only thing I kind of see that stands out to me. How about this? 30 rushing attempts, six yards net for Morgan State. It's got a lot to do with those two guys we just mentioned five minutes ago. Oh, here's a big burst for Omar. Cummings up to midfield, still on his feet down inside the 45. There's a huge gain there, 20-plus yards for Omar Cummings, the sophomore running back out of Beaufort. Great run. All looked like a little inside zone there. Great job by the offensive line, giving him some room. He got a little wiggle. He got in there and did a little wiggle and was able to get him a nice little 20-yard game. Look at that hole, Coach. 
And then he got into the second level, and it was all Omar after that. Yeah, I think I could have ran through that one. Though. <laughs> probably would have been a two-yard game, but I probably would have got through that hole. <laughs> you would have got positive yardage. Oh, we got positive yardage. Yeah, you'd have lunged forward, too. <laughs> Three receivers. Going to be another handoff to Omar, and he gets it closer to the 40-yard line, a gain of about four. It's going to be one heck of a day for the South Carolina State running backs before it's all said and done. You've got Morris with close to 100 yards, Cummings close to 50 yards rushing, and then Corey Fields at quarterback has got about 30 or 40 yards rushing. So close to 200 yards on the day. Here is Fields in the SC State offense. Going to be a delayed handoff to Cummings and right into that defensive line for the Bears. And let's give those guys credit. That was Marino Dendo, one of the defensive linemen leaders for the Bears. Third down and seven upcoming. And I know you're playing conservative here if you're Buddy Pugh, but you can get a first down and score on this drive. This puts the game away. Yeah, but at the same time, too, long as this clock's running, you know, it's the ball's in your court here. All right, back to passes. Fields got a wide open receiver. Caught. Touchdown, South Carolina State. Shaq Davis in the end zone for six. And the Bulldogs are rolling. You called it. <laughs> you called it. I have my moments, Coach. You have your moments. Shaq Davis, that big 6'5 frame. And how about the throw? Check the replay. Three-step drop. and Great concentration by Shaq mm -hmm. to catch that wet ball. You know, you take for granted sometimes when that ball's wet like that. He had to actually look that thing in. Took two hands to bring it in and keep it secure as he turned around into the end zone. And we will step aside. And the Bulldogs are just a few minutes away from coming out of here with a victory. It's 24-3, Bulldogs lead Morgan State. Back on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3 right after this. The ready lineup of SUVs. And back to Orangeburg, South Carolina. And they're dancing here in the OBG on homecoming 2019. <laughs> Great crowd shot there. <laughs> So 24-3, South Carolina State leads Morgan State. And we've got about the entire fourth quarter to go. Shaq Davis with a 40-yard touchdown reception from Corey Fields. Fields' second touchdown connection of the day. He hooked up with Wolverine on a screen pass from about the same distance. And this Bulldog defense can go back to work. Might see a lot of kids get some playing time here with a three-touchdown lead. You know, a lot of things can happen here in 11 minutes, but right. the way this defense has played, it's going to be an uphill battle for the Morgan State Bears. Yeah, as long as that 97-91 and 91 is still in the game, it's going to be tough <laughs> treading for them. And it looked like they're still in there. So, mm -hmm. so here is Galat back in the game. A little swing pass to the back, and he gets hit hard. Vicious tackle there. And a flag is down late. Oh, late flag coming in. I'm trying to see who was in on that stop. That is... Chad Gilchrist. Yep, Chad Gilchrist. He had a good game in the last contest we called against Walford. In week one of the season, when the Bulldogs made the upset over the ninth-ranked Terriers at the time. And a timeout is called. With this penalty on the field, we're trying to figure out what it was for. Didn't see a signal. I'm wondering if it might be uh, targeting. Okay. Official is... Talking to the re review official, I didn't see him make a call for targeting anything. Don't know what the flag was about. So a delay here as the rain is continuing to fall here in Orangeburg. And 
man, you got to be committed here. You got to be absolutely committed to sit out in this rain and watch your bulldogs and bears. Well, in the alma mater of South Carolina State, they say loyal sons and daughters. So <laughs> the people that's here are definitely some loyal sons and daughters. And most likely family. And most likely family, mamas and daddies. Mm hmm. 24 to 3, Bulldogs lead Morgan State as we're still in a timeout as you take a look at the Morgan State huddle on the sideline. What does this mean for Buddy Pugh if his, if his Bulldogs can hang on and win this one? Well, he's, a very, he's a very humble guy. He really is. And he'll be the first to tell you that he have to thank, you know, all the trainers. The... As we take a look at the replay, that did look like targeting. Yeah, it seemed like he might have led with his head there. Mm -hmm. But go ahead with Buddy Pugh. Yeah, I think he, you know, he would like to thank all his, his trainers, you know, coaches the type to be, you know, all his assistant coaches. You know, he's. He's had some great football coaches come through here. You know, you got uh, Tony Elliott, the offense coordinator at Clemson. You have uh, Billy Napier, the head coach of uh, Louisiana Lafayette, and Chris Rump. You know, and uh, you know those guys. He will be the first to thank those guys and his trainers and coaches and equipment staff. So they are calling targeting here, mm -hmm. and they're going to eject Mr. Gilchrist. Look like. Yep, Gilchrist will be. Ejected. He will be sent back to the locker room. The thing about Buddy Pugh is he almost wasn't here this season. There was right. talk about him retiring. Right, yeah. Retiring or I don't know if it was willfully retiring, but it was a lot of stuff that was <laughs> that was going on. Uh, people were saying was Coach coming back or whatever. But Yeah, know. there was talk of him stepping away last year. But, you know, to think about this is 18th season, you know, uh, I would like to look up the stat to see what's the next longest tenured coach in the MEAC. Now. Good point. To be somewhere for 18 seasons nowadays is, yeah. is, is far and few between. You don't you don't hear about that that much. And unfortunately for Morgan State, they're kind of on the other side of the spectrum. Right. They're fifth coach in seven years. And, you know, Morgan State's got some talent, and hopefully they can hold on to Tyron Wheatley. He can have some success. But that longevity and that right. tenure, that right. consistency right. with the program. And I think just what you said puts it in perspective that he was able to be here for 18 years when, like you said, Morgan have had five you yeah. know, in, in seven years. So uh, hats off to South Carolina State administration and people for sticking with Coach for 18 years. All right, so Morgan State picking up some positive yardage here. 10.33 left. They're on the Bulldog side of the field. And this redshirt sophomore. Galat has moved the ball in between the 30s. And there's a nice little pitch and catch, little slant route. And that's caught again by Woolfolk. He's got a handful of catches in this second half. And that moves the sticks for another first down. Bears are moving the ball. Bears moving the ball. South Carolina State's done a great job today of bending but not breaking. You know, they've been able to move the ball, like you say, from the 30 to the 30. But uh, whenever they get out near the red zone, South Carolina State's been able to bow up a little bit. Look at this formation. Two receivers to the near side, lined up, rolling out. Is the quarterback being pressured, throws it, and it's incomplete. B.J. Davis, you get a shot of him. Haven't really called his name a whole lot. He had that pick six against Florida A&M last week. There's on the rush. Couldn't complete it, so second down and long. 9.48 left in the football game. Bulldogs trying to get their fourth win of the season and second in the MEAC. Back to pass over the middle. Fires got his man, and he's going to be tackled inside the 25. Good enough for a first down from this point. Yes, it is. Great pass and catch. I tell you now, I've been impressed with Morgan on offense, being able to throw the ball around a little bit. They got some pretty good-looking receivers running around out there and, also. And both these quarterbacks can fire it. They can throw it. Yeah. Well, a lot of movement on the SC defense. I think they're out of position, and Morgan State sees that, finds a man inside the 20 to the 19. Let's see where they mark his forward progress. That was Cofield on the reception. His seventh catch of the year out of Baltimore, Maryland. Maryland. 
Two receivers right, one left. Galat going to roll to his right, throws. A little pitching catch far side on the hitch route. Did he get him? Got him. Yeah. Caught the pass near the first down yard marker. And Bears going no huddle. Third down and inches. Morgan State saying in the passing formation. And they're going to run. Wide open. Hole into the end zone. Flips in for a score. Touchdown, Bears. The Bears are not quite ready to go back to Baltimore yet. They wanted to go and make this thing a, 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 another game. It's, uh, kick this PAT. They're still down two scores here, but it's still a lot of time left here. That is Josh Chase. Got hit midair. Flipped over into the end zone for the score. And the Bears aren't out of this yet. 24-9 to pending the extra point. They heard us talking about Buddy Pugh breaking the all-time record here at SC State, and they said, hold on, boys. Say, Not hold. done quite yet. Spot, kick, and that is good. 24-10, to 10, now your score. It's back to a two-touchdown deficit. South Carolina State still up front, and they'll have the ball when we come back on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3 back after this. Your families, Navy Federal Credit Union. Back to Orangeburg, South Carolina, and the rain is maybe as hard as it's ever been. 24 to 10, South Carolina State leads Morgan State. Bears just scored, took it right down the field. And now South Carolina State will try to hold on to the football. Maybe tack on a score, but they want to. Run some clock here. Yeah, at this point, it's about getting first downs and taking care of the football here. Last thing you want to do is turn the football back over to this guy with this team, and they're having a little momentum. So one of the up back takes it far side of the field, knocked out of bounds. So South Carolina State will come back out on offense. They've been pretty efficient here, especially with the weather conditions on offense. Morgan State with all three of their timeouts still remaining. So Corey Fields comes back out to lead this offense. A couple of touchdown passes on the day. Out of the shotgun, two receivers right, one left. Takes a snap, handoff straight ahead. I think that's LeBron Morris. Nothing doing there. Tackled in the backfield. And we have got uh, blurred vision here in the press box and on our monitor. <laughs> yeah. uh, it is uh, The rain is coming down. And Let's see here. Eight minutes remaining, 24 to 10. As you look at Corey Fields and Omar Cummings and a shot of big Alex Taylor. I'll tell you one thing, Alex takes up the whole screen. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, the big right tackle NFL prospect. Scouts are loving that size. Handoff near side. Cummings going to cut it inside around the 36-yard line. Trying to find a crease. And third down and long upcoming. Check the replay here. Not a whole lot of room to run on that play. Third down and 10. Third down and 10 here. I think you still have to run the football here. I think you still uh, running the clock, I think, is more important than getting a first down at this time. So mm -hmm. if you can run and get a first down, that's a bonus. But I'd like to keep this clock running if I'm Buddy Pew here. Let's see what the Bulldogs do. Third down and long. They're going to pass. Fields back to throw. Uh, over the middle to Omar Cummings at the 40. Picks up. Half of the 10 yards, and the Bulldogs will come out to punt. Well, getting a short pass is sort of like uh, getting a little short run, you know, if you complete it. You know, so if, if it was incomplete there, the clock stops there, and that goes into uh, Morgan State's um, favor. But to be able to get a little short pass off, punt, I think you're still fine here. And for the Bulldogs, you only take two minutes off the clock. 
And that's good for Morgan State. They're going to get another opportunity here. Down two touchdowns. But the clock is ticking. Bulldogs have won 11 of the last 12 meetings with the Bears. And that's going to take a bounce into the end zone for a touchback. And the Bears will put it in play at the 20 with 6.08 remaining in the football game. We'll keep it right here. Kind of interesting the way the quarterbacks have played here. DeAndre Harris was your first half quarterback. Deion Gallat Jr. played in the second half and still playing. Right. Giving him a lot of playing time here. Let's see who comes out. I think I see DeAndre. Yes, DeAndre Harris, who we have not seen since the second quarter, is back in at QB. He is the one with more experience, more playing time, at least this year, for sure. And overall. Harris going to take the snap, drops back, being pressured, throws, and it's incomplete. And I think somebody got a hand on that. Second down and 10 upcoming. We'll see if somebody got a mid on that. Well, yeah, they did, and they put a hand up. I saw Dominguez Wilson out of Bennettsville, Marlboro County. In on that play. And there's a pass far side. Looks like he just got the first down at the 31-yard line, and the Bears continue that no huddle. That is Manashe Bailey, who had a big game against Delaware State last week at a Capitol Heights, Maryland. He's the leading receiver for the Bears, but haven't called his name but maybe two or three times. They've held him in check. 5.42 left. Bears trying to move the ball, trying to make it a one-score game. And just throws that one away. Second down. Second down to get opportunity to stop the clock here. You know, if you're South Carolina State, you just, once again, you want to make them earn the way down the field. Don't give up a big play here because as long as you're making them earn it, you got the clock running, so you'll be fine. So now they put Dion back in the game. Two receivers left, one right. Oh, ball on the ground. And did the Bulldogs jump on it? I think so. I think they did. Bulldogs have it. South Carolina State has it back. And the Bulldogs will have the football when we come back. They lead it by a score of 24 to 10. Just a mishandled snap, wet ball. And we'll be back after this on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Portal from Facebook. Are we in break or not? Okay, so we will not step away for a break. We're going to keep it right here. So here's a handoff near side to the back inside the 20. And gets a short gain there. Dominguez Wilson was the man who recovered the fumble, Demetrius Davis. And yes. He got a hand on the ball earlier in the drive. And the junior out of Bennettsville making the play there. So everybody on this defensive line making plays. Everybody making plays. Everybody contributing. Everybody want to have a piece of getting coached this record. SC State can put the game on ice with a touchdown here. Two receivers left, one right. Fields. Looks over the defense. There's a good shot of them there. Takes the football, handoff, far side, LeBron Morris trying to get space, 15, 10, cuts it inside, down inside the five. It's going to be first and goal for the Bulldogs. Clock ticking, 430. And that puts LeBron Morris over the century mark, 100 yards rushing for him. Yeah, he's had a great football game today, real tough runner. Showed a little speed there to get outside. Patient runner, too. Very patient. So SC State going to try to take as much time off the clock as they can before they run the next play. And 
Takes a snap, handoff to Morris, and he's drugged down at the five. Might have been a loss on the play. That was 92, Christian Teague. Well, he's a good-looking lineman. He is. Second down and goal at the five. And a timeout called. So it stops the clock with 349. 24 to 10, South Carolina State leads here. And this would be the ultimate gut punch to the Morgan State Bears and put this one away. Yeah, if, we, if South Carolina State can score here, I think that will all but do it. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the trainers starting up. They must already feel like they can start taking the stuff off the field. So. <laughs> A wet and dreary day in Orangeburg is shaping up to be an awesome win for Buddy Pugh. One of the most important and crucial wins in his career. Passing Willie Jeffries in the all-time coaching mark. Eighteen seasons with South Carolina State. 129 will be oh so sweet for Buddy Pugh and the Bulldogs. They got to finish the job here. Five yards to go. Morris going to take it near side. Can't spin out of the tackle. Yeah, Morgan State is not ready to go home yet. They're nope. still fighting. And did they call yet another timeout? I think they did. So a timeout on the field by Morgan State. That is their second. And if you're Morgan State here, I mean, you know, best case scenario, you obviously have to hope for no points to keep it at a right. two-touchdown game. Right, right. You... So you're trying to rip the football out. If they, you know, attempt a field goal, right. you got to make sure they um, – <laughs> you got to make sure what happened last time where right. they mishandled the snap. Well, I think that's kind of like what they're thinking. I think they're thinking if we can hold them to a field goal attempt there, we might have the same thing that happened last time, you know, being that the rain is steady picking up and it's getting a little harder. So if you can get a stop here, you use your timeouts here. Basically, I think Coach Wheatley is, is selling, putting all everything, all the chips in on this drive well, right yep. here. Yep, on this drive he is. So this should be third down and goal. On the right hash. If I'm Buddy Pugh in the offensive staff, I might go a little trick play and put it away. <laughs> a little trick play. Well, if you're going to go out, go out with a bang. Mm -hmm. Out of the shotgun, they're going to throw. Fields, back to pass. Good protection. Now he's being chased to his left. Flips it out, dumps it to the running back, and nothing doing there at the 13. Morgan's going to call their final timeout. Yep. That was a, a good coverage by Morgan State because Fields had protection, just right. couldn't find anywhere to go with the ball. And, you know, we said that early in the game. I, Morgan, I've, I've been very impressed with this. This is a very good, solid football team. This yeah. is a perfect example of you don't look at people's records. You know, uh, I think offensively they're pretty good, and they're going to win some more games in the MEAC before this thing is all said and done. And we will step away for a break. SC State going to come out with a field goal attempt. 24 to 10. Bulldogs lead over the Bears. Three minutes left. Thrill Ride. Treadstone. Tuesdays at 10 on USA. Back to Orangeburg, South Carolina. Homecoming 2019. South Carolina State with a 30 yard field goal attempt. And that is. No good. Wide left, and the Bears still have life, Demetrius Davis. Bears still have life. So what, what uh, Coach Wheatley wanted, he got. So yep. he's got an opportunity to, to score here, and 325 still is a lot of time. Looked like a good hold, and they slow it down on the replay. Oh, it hit the goal post, the right goal post. I thought that went wide left from this angle. It just hit that goal post. And now Morgan State will come out again, still with a little bit of life. Still. Down 24 to 10, 325 remaining. 
Buddy Pugh going for the all-time coaching wins record. But the Bears are trying to stand in the way of that. Down two scores. They need a score and an onside kick. And that's incomplete. As long as this defensive line <laughs> is still on the field with Goodwin and Perry, it's going to be tough. And there's Xavier Johnson. He's had a good day as well. He's got a couple of sacks. Yeah, Xavier is playing so hard, his nameplate's about to come off the back of his jersey. <laughs> that's playing hard right that's there. Pl that's playing hard. That's what you want. <laughs> Second down and ten. Three minutes to play. Bears going from right to left. Looking for an open receiver. Hand in his face. Throws it away. Clock stops at the 317 mark. Every time he drops back, there's somebody in his face. He's been under pressure all night. Great job by the defense. Great job by the defensive line of getting the push they've been able to get today. 24 to 10, your score on a rainy day in Orangeburg. Claps his hands. Back to pass. Bing Chase throws, and that is incomplete. And the last gas for the Bears is coming up on fourth and ten. Yeah, this right here might be the last play for them if they don't get a first down here. Uh, South Carolina State, being that Morgan is out of timeouts at this time, South Carolina State pretty much can run this thing on out. Yep. So Morgan State needs their best play in the playbook right here. And that play would be one that works. <laughs> I tell my guys, the best play you can call is one that works. Four down linemen, fourth and ten. Goodwin, Perry, Johnson, they're all up front, and here they come. Throws over the middle, and that's intercepted. Intercepted by the Bulldogs. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Can he get in? Touchdown, South Carolina State. But flags are down. Flags are down. Oh, boy. What was that on? I think the interception is going to be good. I think it might be a block in the back on the return or something like that. So intercepted, takes it into the end zone for the score, but let's see what the flag is on. So on the return, block in the back. And I don't have a 21 on the roster there, Coach. Don't have a 21. I don't have one either. So the interception will count. South Carolina State will come out with the football. And that will be your dagger. I saw the last name was Moultrie. Kendall Moultrie. At Atlanta, South Carolina. Okay. He's number 22 on the roster, wearing 21 today. Three minutes to play. Going to hand off up the middle LeBron Morris, and he gets hit hard near the 20-yard line. 2.58 left. I was thinking to myself, Coach, getting the record, you go dash him with a bucket full of water, but he's been dashed. <laughs> for the past three hours with water, so <laughs> I don't think you have to do that anymore. Yeah, listen, don't do that to the coach. <laughs> he, don't, he don't need the Gatorade bath today. No. Nope. we got to figure something else out. 24-10, to 10, Bulldogs lead. Clock ticking, 235. Trying to one, one more play, pick up a first down, and get in that victory formation. The best formation in football. Two-yard pickup, second down and eight. Clock entering two to play in this game. Bulldogs will go play Bethune-Cookman. Morgan State will play Florida A&M. We do not have a two-minute warning in college football. It is now under two minutes to play. Fields the QB. Two receivers. 
Going to be a run. LeBron Morse tries to find some space, and he can't quite get to the 15. It brings up third down and about five yards to go. It's going to be a little interesting because uh, it looked like if we if South Carolina State does not get a first down here, fourth down. You could just go for it. Could just go for it. Yeah. Probably don't want to risk putting the field goal unit out. Mm-hmm. Minute 16 left, third down and five. Fields going to line up in the shotgun. LeBron Morris is his running back. Takes a snap, handoff to Morris, bounce it outside. 15, 10, 5, and he's out of bounds inside the 5, and that will do it. Buddy Pugh in this offense can take the knee and send everybody back to the locker room. First and goal for the Bulldogs, LeBron Morris with one heck of a game today, over 120 yards rushing. How fitting is it that Buddy Pugh and his football team get in that victory formation as he will take 129 career victories in the all-time record at South Carolina State. Thirty-five seconds left. I don't think the Bulldogs need to snap it again, do they? Nope. I think that might do it. And that'll do it. The all-time coaching record and wins at South Carolina State goes to Buddy Pugh. The Bulldogs knock off the Morgan State Bears by a score of 24-10. to Congratulations to Buddy Pugh and the Bulldogs. Pugh is your all-time wins leader. How about that, Coach Davis? Congratulations. Hats off to him. That's going to be a record that I think will last a long time. Buddy Pugh passes his mentor, his coach, his friend, Willie Jeffries. And he is the all-time wins leader. Look at that. They put him on the shoulders. An emotional Buddy Pugh being congratulated by the players and fans. Great moment for the coach. <laughs> coach is saying, put me down. <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't been that high in the air in a long time. <laughs> 24-10 to 10 is your score. South Carolina State wins it over Morgan State. This was a big one and a nice win for SC State. They did it on defense and on the ground under conditions. Yep, they did. They was able to uh, win the special team battle, win the turnover battle, and didn't have to do a whole lot on offense tonight, but they did enough. So that'll do it. 24-10, to 10, South Carolina State is a winner over Morgan State. The Bulldogs improve to 4-2 and two on the year, 2-1 and one in the MEAC. Morgan State falls to 1-6 and 1-3 and in, in conference play. For our complete production crew, Coach Demetrius Davis, I am Tyler Cup saying so long from Orangeburg. SC State is a winner, and Buddy Pugh is the all-time record holder for wins as a coach at South Carolina State. Good night, everybody.